All right, back to it. Time to move to the Rising Stones, I believe. Let us set aside the matter of the Asian until after we have completed our move to the Rising Stones. There is but one final favor I would ask you before I depart. I believe I mentioned before that my father was a member of the Alamegan Resistance. The truth, however, is more complicated than that. As far as the Empire knew, he was their spy. He maintained the deception for nigh on half a decade, furnishing the Resistance with vital Imperial secrets while feeding its paymasters suddenly suddenly conceived this information. When he died more about 15 years ago, my father left behind his journal, which I have closely guarded ever since. It contains every shred of information he and his agents would steal on what they believe to be the single greatest threat to Eorzea, the primals. Its wisdom has guided me through the years, though there is much within I still do not understand. It is my hope that Oriange will fare better. Tell him to treat it with care. It is all I have left of my heart. I thought they departed. Hello, Ricardo. To add in the sound. The, fa the father's final bequest, Dalto's lifelong labor. It is no small thing to surrender such a cherished memento. Well can I imagine the antecedent's pain. Upon mine honor, I swear to spare no effort in the study of these materials, lest my lady's sacrifice be in vain. Essigos, this has been failure. Forgive me, but I could wait no longer. I have departed for the Rising Stones. If if you have yet to... Once you have given the journal to Oriange, I bid you come to the Seventh Heaven in Revenant's Toll. Tataru will be there to show you inside our new headquarters. Assuming you have already tuned to it, you may wish to use, make use of our new Aetherite in Revenant's Toll. After all, it is right on our doorstep. Yeah, I got it when I went to save you from Castrum Century. <laughs> Ooh, there's an unlock. Oh, it's an unlock to uh, unlock Good King Mogamog the the twelfth uh, hard mode. Among Smoogle kind, the legend of Great King Mugamog the twelfth doth tell of wise and magnanimous ruler. Alas, the entity thus summoned put the lie uh, to this imag imagining of his. Brief and suddenly unpeaceful reign. Uh, it was most disturbing for me to learn then that the Mughal's guard have once more succeeded in placing their <laughs> potentate upon the thorny throne. Throne. Methinks the ag agents of chaos that lurk in the shadow of this deed. Only with the Asians guileful intervention could they have called the king back from the Aether with such haste. As ever f falls to thee, to the to the blade born of light, to banish the paragon's dark ambition from this realm. The twelve only know which what dire power doth corrupt the savior of these gentle forest folk. Thy name has been called as a ghost. The more modern, moderate faction of the Mughals has joined with the order of the Twin Adder in an event to open the uh, path to the good king's domain. I bid thee make haste to the Adder's Nest and once more pledge thine aid to disposing this royal myth made flesh. Good King Mogulmog this the twelfth. Just Well, I'm first gonna go to uh it's, it's a free teleport. Um I'm gonna quickly unlock this. Anyway, I wonder. I have 60 irregular tomes of pageantry, I think.
I got the legendary kabui. So we'll just go right down the list. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do the blissful one. This is one of those event things where if you run a certain uh, duty, which is basically what they call all the instant content, uh, you can earn these. What are they called? Them? Irregular uh, tombstone of pageantry. And you can turn them in for cool stuff. So in this case, I just got them out. And if I get any more, or <laughs> you can use it for, for the next mount and so on. They got other things there. It's just it's all like cosmetics. Corporal Windsmall, glad I could see you. I assume you have appraised the situation regarding the Mughal monarch. After your previous disposal with the king, a couple of cop uh, uh, approached the Mughal's guard and attempted to convince them of the error of their ways. Unfortunately, it appears their efforts of persuasion are rather the opposite effect. The royal century reportedly flew to a frenzy and focused their races. This indignation to a new summoning ritual. The happen was the unwavering intensity of the Mughal's guard prayer, but the king has returned to the forest developed in an almost blinding aura of majesty. Kaplukov tells us that this Totally maniacal avatar is now taken to call himself Great King Mogamog the Twelfth. Uh, suffice it to say that the Elder Seed Seer is willing to condone, condone the necessary act of regicide. <laughs> For the safety of all who dwell within the Twelve Wood, it would be decided that the king must fall. A certain number of member of the Elder Seed Seer's personal guard has already escorted Coplicop to the ward that shields the uh, monarch's domain. Those among us with the ability to see Moogles are often in high demand, but considering the urgency of our mission, our leader felt it best to expedite the matters. Pray, make your preparations, and set us set out as soon as you're able. A couple of couple awaits you in the Bramble Patch of the East Shroud. Basically, to do, do the unlock for the 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 next. Uh, tier of. I just woke up about an hour ago, by the way. That's all I could tell you. Apparently it's gonna rain and stuff. And apparently it's raining here in the south round. Or east round. And where I am really I did. I knew you'd come. At least I was hoping. Kupo. Kupo. K-U-P-O. I might just continue saying what I normally do is is Kupo. But it's Kupo. Which doesn't roll off the tongue very well. So I'm going to probably just switch over and say Kupo. <laughs> because it just makes more sense to me. Not long ago, I, was st stirred I had a stern word with the Moogles guard about the dangers of turning pleasant fairy tales into disturbing reality, but they insisted that the intimidating force that is good King Mogamog the Twelfth, may his scepter's judgment ever command our respect, is exactly the sort of savior we need. The Moogles guard are afraid, Koopal. Uh, afraid of how the forces, <laughs> forces has changed. Afraid of the uh, ever, never ending conflict. I just. I love Moogles. I just love them so much. If, if they show up in anything, it's a good thing. It's a never ending conflict. I'm afraid that we Moogles have no place in this world. I'm, I'm scared, scared of all these things too, but the thought of unleashing our royal menace upon the Twelve Woods scares me even more, Koopal. Uh, please, I must deal with them firmly before this goes too far. I measured 
a measured thrash shooter, of course, nothing too brutal. You can never, you can enter this third month here, though the terror I, I made it through the terror that I made in the ward. Take care, good fortune. In the meantime, I, I'll go let the others know that Great King Mogglebog the Twelfth is reigning with minimal bloodshed. <laughs> we'll be vacating his throne. I can do Thorn March ex Extreme. Fortunately, I'm not given the quest that requires me to do it, so uh, in order to complete, so I'm I'm kind of happy for that. Anyways, we were going to Rose and Stole. Here's Tataru. She's outside. Oh, Asagos, you're here. Good, good. We were all wondering when you'd show up. As I was just telling your resident, your restive reception is here, I'm pleased to inform you that all the documents have been prepared and all signatures signed. Rising Stones is officially yours. Splendid. From this day forward, I will spare no effort in seeing that it is as welcoming and comfortable as a, a home as thus says the Waking Sands ever was. That said, this is all somewhat intimidating, is it not? So many unfamiliar places and faces. Most of the men and women you see around here in Revenant's Toll are adventurers who come and go as they wish. I dare say that should make it easier for you to go about your business here. And it shouldn't hurt that Essigos here has already made somewhat of a name for himself here. Isn't that right? Isn't that so, Essigos? Why, that's wonderful to hear. Rest assured that this receptionist will work just as hard to take it to see that our efforts did not skip a beat despite the relocation. And she does have a little bit of an exit. And with that, as a ghost, I do believe it's time you officially announce your presence to everyone inside. The antecedent and the others will surely be overjoyed to see you. No, oh, she unlocks here. You know what? I think the Rising Stones. Looks better than the um, Waking Sands. Also, Hori Boulder. Row. Paladin. Cute. Not as cute, cute as uh, Daddy Slopper. Or Slopperson. Not Slopper. Different, different ones. Anyways. And she has a new desk. Big desk. Well, this is certainly spacious. Today marks a new beginning for the science of the seventh dawn, for today we declare our independence. 
We shall henceforth be beholden to no nation and serve all of Eorzea's people proudly and openly. But this does not mean we will sever our ties to the Eorzean alliance. On the contrary, the antecedent and I shall endeavor to strengthen them. Rest assured, however, that we shall not permit political considerations to influence our decisions. Our identity remains unchanged, but as does our cause. We are the science of the Seventh Dawn, and our single purpose is to safeguard the future of Eosia. For Eosia! Mummy your time, Essicus. I would speak of Illid Illidib Illidibus. Pardon the intrusion, my lady, but the matter which bringeth me will admit no delay. Mine own attempt to contact the students of Baldassian have been met with silence. No one will respond? How odd. Allow me to try. No response. Surely they would not ignore us. They have never yet, my lady. I fear we must assume the worst. No, no, no. I will not believe it. An outpost, perhaps, but not the headquarters. Their wars are beyond circumvention. Had they come under attack, they would certainly have raised the alarm. None could penetrate their sanctum unnoticed. But for those who lack the gift and the knowledge, both. Oh no. Contact their agents in the field at once. If aught has befallen the students of Baldassian, we must know. Though the thought of it pains me, until much, such time that we have evidence to the contrary, we must, we can but assume the worst. Accordingly, we must needs seek additional source, another source of information on the Debus. It is possible that others in the homeland have have possessed such knowledge. Be fair warned, however, they are unlike to yield it unconditionally. Do what you must. Yet another unforeseen and unwelcome development. What could be next, I wonder? A visit from Crimson Clan, Asian, perhaps? Or an ochre? Or a puce? And what if our our allies when they fall silent. For a time I thought we had gained the upper hand. When we shattered the crystal of darkness and cast out La Abrea, I dared to hope that we had found a way to rid ourselves of the Asian menace. But I was wrong. He endures and may yet return. Upon that point, I have no doubt that Elidibus spoke true. That there must be a way to destroy them utterly. A way to spare this world their unholy machinations. I dare not consider the alternative. There are forces at work we do not understand, Eskos. I discern them all around, and disturbances too great and too numerous to be dismissed as mere coincidence. Doubtless the paragons are involved, but how and what and to what end is far from clear. I know not what will come, but I do know that we will rise and meet one meet it as one. To my stalwart hero, my, your face is a picture of resolve. I know that you are ready when the time comes. With luck, however, that will not be for a while. Pray return to your private affairs with my blessing. Should anything arise, you will be informed. Kryle, where are you? Your intercession was not foretold. You object? We question. Our plans are in motion. Your intentions unclear. They survive. The seventh Arter is struggling now in the, in the gift. Does that not intrigue you?
No, it does not. Serve as you will, so too shall I. I labor not for cross purposes. The wisdom of his plan shall become apparent in time when the veil is lifted from their eyes. And as long as at uh, long last long last they see. Well, we're working. Philia has a new assignment for you. Surely there is no rest for the weary. Scarce as I be began to make myself make myself at home when I received a request of assistance from Amagina and Sons Mineral Concern. It would appear that their storehouse in Horizon has been the target of a series of covert robberies. Minor as they seem in isolation, occasional discrepancies in, this, in the manifest have long dis dismissed as clerical errors. It is only di during the concern's annual audit that a pattern became apparent. Significant co quantities of crystals, and only crystals, were missing. I need hardly tell you what that may imply. The brass blades charged with investigating the thefts believe that anyone within the concern is that someone is in the concern is selling the crystals for profit. Alas, they have yet been un unable to identify a likely suspect, and the concern's pr proprietors have grown frustrated with their lack of progress. Needless to say, I would not have g agreed to intervene had the stolen goods been merely monetary value. There has been a possibility that the thief thief acts not out of self-interest but in service to a primal, we can ill afford to await the blades to realize their mistake. Pray depart for Horizon at your earliest convenience. Rendezvous with Yestrola when you arrive. She and Thancred have already been begun a preliminary investigation. I have every confidence that the three of you will get to the bottom of these thefts. I only hope our fears prove unfounded when you do. Oh, I need to go to Horizon so I can teleport. Horizon. Ah, that's a ghost. Your assistance is most welcome. I've already spoken at length with the brass blade of the rose, a bait to little, to little avail. It would appear that the thieves took great pains to conceal their activities. I could go into further detail, but your time would be better spent conversing with Fufudupa. He is the officer charged with leading the investigation, and I would only be repeating that which she related to me. If aught eluded my attention, mayhap it would not elude yours. Eskos, what a pleasure to see you again. Yustola said to expect you. Terrible business, these thieves. We have yet to confirm the quantity of crystals stolen, but I dare say it would be greater than... Ah, but never mind that. I have news to share. A short while ago, the driver of the heavy laden carriage refused to halt for inspection and broke through one of our checkpoints on the Royal Elegant Sunway. The cart bolted off towards Eastern Thanel, and where, thank the gods, I hear that our colleagues were able to apprehend them without further incident. A speeding carriage? That seemed a, a curious choice of thieves with such proven cunning. Yet the Amalja do have a foothold in the eastern Thanalin, hmm? And what of their cargo? Do they carry the crystals we seek? It would... We should be receiving a report any moment now, but I fail to see what else it could. 
Did you miss me, friends? I'm back, and I fear I come bearing disappointing news. Or on second thought, perhaps it's good news after all. Sancred, wherever have you been off to? I figured you had everything under control here, so I took a brief excursion to the east to check on our Mondra friends. I wouldn't, and wouldn't you believe it, it happened upon a runaway carriage by the, on the way, and even was able to do my small part to help my friends in the breastplates and intercept it. In all my years, I have never seen such a, a prodigious quantity of slumness. The blades were calling in, in one of the greatest halls they've ever seen. The stolen crystals, on the other hand, are nowhere to be found. Is that so? Alas, I suppose we have no choice but to resume our search elsewhere. We should reassess our options as well. Oh, come with us, Eskos. A few steps away. Against all expectation, it would seem the Amalja are innocent of this particular spate of crimes, but all indications they have yet to replenish the stores of crystals exhausted during their last attempt to summon Ifrit. What I can't uh, fathom is why anyone else would go to such lengths to obtain crystals in such quantities. It cannot be that we're dealing with simple thieves, and that if their modems are profit, why would they limit their trade to crystals alone? Plainly, they are missing something. While you think of what while you think of what the, it might be, I shall inform Oriange of our progress, uh, or lack thereof. Now then. Tis I. The situation may be more complicated than we anticipated. Indeed, I shall remain watchful. Ere thou goest, another matter requireth thine attention. A young maiden, full eager to... Wherefore inquirest thou of her fairness? Oh, very well. Be she damsel or devil, I shall direct her steps to Revenant's toll. Save thine insinuations for one given to such impropriety. <laughs> Thou shalt not find me amenable. Far across the sea from the land of Doma have we traveled. We seek audience with the ruler of these lands. Who here speaks for you? I don't need any of these. I'm just going to take the money. Edgar wishes to discuss how to proceed with the investigation. Any bright ideas? A solitary flash of insight? No? Well then, for better suggestion, I say we try picking Fufu Lupa's brain again. Who knows if we work together we may find something of use nestled away within it. I'm regretting uh, not putting on a cup of co uh, thing of coffee. I might do that here in a quick break, but... In a moment. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, but it's, it's good to see you return. I've uh, given some thought to the matter, and I have just hit upon a most disturbing possibility. How could I have been so blind? Calm yourself, Lufu Lupa. What is the disturbing possibility of which you seek? I have come. I was contemplating how the thieves' activities escaped our notice for so long, and then it came to me. What if there was someone among our own ranks conspiring with them, a traitor in our own midst? It would be most unfortunate, for our fears proved well-founded, Fufunupa. Indeed, if our 
For reasons of security, the concern decided to transfer the remaining crystals stored in Horizon to another location. Their plans would be discovered the moment the brass plates were formed. Ah, and such a shipment would surely be well guarded. With thieves as wisely as wily as ours risk uh, open confrontation? Mayhap not, but neither would the concern be eager to present them with such an obvious target. Nay, they would instead select to carry out the transfer in secret to entrust the goods to, let's say, a lone Makoti miner traveling without escort so as not to attract undue attention. And who... Ah, I see. Yes, the concern may well, well elect to do that, but to travel with so much cargo would be a strenuous task indeed, and this miner would certainly need to, to rest upon the way, mayhap north of the bridge to Hammerley. A fine spot for a rest, would you not agree, Eskos? You lie in wait in the north, and I shall do the same to the south. Ahem, forgive me, my friends, but I have received new orders. I must inform my men at once. Call me a cynic, but I would would be surprised if these thieves lay down their arms and surrender. See that you are prepared to offer them some encouragement. Wind speed and I but will certainly be hidden behind this rock. Cause we're short. Up to you, uh, Pete, in there. Stubborn to the last, as expected. You are unharmed? Oh, yeah, they're easy peasy. I'm also, like, six levels above them. A gang of sea wolf thieves, and Thanalyn, no less. I suppose there's a first time for everything. Sea wolves. All of them. Aye. And all with the same taste for. It tastes to facial touch too. Blue, in case you were wondering. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I have got blue facial tattoos. It's fine. <laughs> I don't really mean. <laughs> These are a long way from home. <laughs> I, I love this. During that pause. <laughs> you see me kind of going, huh, 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 like in between the two. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. If you'd be so good to attend to the outstanding matters in Horizon, I have inquiries to make. To Horizon, then. Fufu Dupa would want to hear of our meeting with the, with the thieves. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break here. Well, not really quick because I'm going to uh, take some coffee, or at least put some coffee on and refill my beverage and toss some things. So I'll, I'll be right back. Enjoy the music, I suppose.
All right, I'm back. Coffee is still on and is sputtering your way. I think I need to clean it. I need to get some vinegar. Talk to Fufu Lupa here. On behalf of the Brass Blades of the Rose, I thank you for your service to Horizon. Ah, but you have not not been idle. Well, we were... We have not been idle. While you were afield, we succeeded in identifying the traitor in our ranks. Is that so? Then by your leave, I should very much like to have a word with the fellow in private. Uh, no, I'm afraid that was not possible. Regretly, he's um, managed to subdue the unit of blades dispatched to detain him and made good of his escape. Oh, for the love of... How did you manage that exactly? Your men have, have been sampling that summoners we confiscated, have they? Or was he a giant in disguise? No, no, he was quite strong. A sea wolf, laments him born and born and raised, I believe. But do not worry, we will have we will find him, we'll have my word on it. I see. But keep me praised of any developments. Yes? He's standing next to me. Understood. I fear our time together is an end, my friend. Your services are required elsewhere. Uh, awfully disappointing, I know, but one must follow where duty leads. You may try to look a little... You may try to look a little little disappointed. Or do you give me to another one of your stoic nods? You do, don't you? I actually... Uh, so here's how I make my coffee. And it's just regular coffee. I Nothing special. All I do is, is before I pour my coffee into the mug, I take a, a tablespoon of sugar, put it in, and then I've got this uh, coffee mate. I got this big coffee mate salted caramel chocolate creamer pump. <laughs> I pump in two or three of those, depending on how much I expect to to put in, because usually the last they only do like one. Uh, and uh, and then I pour my coffee in and stir as I'm pouring it in to, so that the, the sugar and the uh, syrup uh, kind of melt together. I don't like too much cream, but I do like having having it creamy. Mainly because I kind of want... I, I like coffee, but I like hot chocolate more, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I like how they they reference the fact that the Warrior of Light, our character, never actually says anything. Just nods. <laughs> Shakes heads, emotes. <laughs> there there are a few times when I wish they would give us words, like in the Praetorium where the guy has for for whom do you fight? And it just looks at us and all we do is is glare at him. And then he says, how glib? And it's like, like, well, we didn't even say anything. I would think we'd at least have to say something. But anyways. One of those actually help. I mean, I use water to make the coffee because, like, I, if you use straight milk, then you, you would want to use instant coffee and, and heat up the milk separately. You don't want to run milk through a coffee maker. <laughs> I suppose if you use, like, a coffee press, that would work. Thank you for information on your next assignment. The antecedent bid me tell you, tell you to make for Vesper, Vesper Bay, where young Alphano awaits your coming most eagerly. It was he who requested your assistance. Some commotion or incident, I'm not privy to the details. While you do whatever it what it is that Alphano has planned, I shall endeavor to track down our treacherous 
brass plate. And when I do, you may rest assured we will have our answers. Well, just that piece of Vesper Bay is nearby and I don't need to use any of my te teleport tickets. And despite the fact that we've moved to the Rising Stones, uh, we may still need them. You are late. No that actually probably says it. You are late. No matter. I know where our visitors are, are headed. From what I have been able to gather, this vessel belongs to a band of Domans who seek an audience with the Sultana. You are familiar with Doma, yes? No, I'm fine. Well, like the rest of the nations of the eastern continent, it is ruled by Gallian by the Gallian Empire. Given our visitors' unannounced arrival, as well as the state of their ship, I suspect they did not leave their homeland under the best circumstances. Needless to say, I would be very interested to hear the tale. More importantly, what they know of the current state of affairs in the Empire. Such information could prove most useful. We would be fools not to pursue the, this opportunity. Do you not think? Come with me to old Dar, Dar Essigos. Unless it's unless I am mistaken, I am and I am rarely mistaken. We will find the Domans bickering with the Sult Sultan Sworn at the Rolling Promenade. You are uncertain of your role in the proceedings. Insurance. If our guests are not themselves imperial agents, I see it seems fair to assume that they may be being pursued by some. And if not, we who better than you to have have on hand an event of an unforeseen diplomatic incident. Besides, I do do so enjoy your sparkling rep, repartee. <laughs> I think they're still making jokes about the fact that the, that we really never actually say anything. Besides, besides the the they don't give us text because all we're saying is basically recounting a tale. <laughs> Satisfied? Good. <laughs> I shall, I'll see you in Olda. Well, to Olda. By the way, just, just just pro tip when playing this game, there are two 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 things. When you go into to your actions and traits, you can basically put any of these anything that's in any of these tabs, any of these onto your hotbar, even if you don't have it yet. So I could actually see when I'm getting getting stuff uh, here. Like, so this is kind of weird. There's this. There's a thing called Forb Shift, which I've never really figured out how to effectively use and and what button to put it on to use put in my rotation. I have a higher level long. We get that at 52. I'm 56. I don't have it, mainly because I get this from my my job quest. The only thing is, in order to do the job quest, I need to be into be working on the Heaven's Word expansion. The only thing is. I'm still in the Realm Reborn <laughs> version. It's a Realm Reborn is difficult because Realm Reborn it is 2.0, uh, so an expansion on the original Final Fantasy XIV. The only thing is that Final Fantasy XIV, when it originally launched, was awful. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> At least that's I, I I have no first hand experience. I never actually played it. But it was awful. It was so bad. And in the end, uh the the team just did an awful job. I think one of the things was 
like one of the weird things was they never had a jump. You couldn't just like jump up and down. You always had to like go around things or, or find a ramp to get up to a place. You couldn't like just jump up on something. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, the the menuing was awful. The, the, the just the combat was awful. It it was. They were trying. I suppose they were trying some things to be you know very different than other MMOs or something. Which is fine, but there's just some things which just ended up just not working out. So they brought Yoshida P. I, I don't remember his last name. Yoshida, uh, who is like the big star. He's like, the, like when you think of him, he's he's like the uh, uh, Ian Hasekosis of of Final Fantasy XIV. They brought him on, and what they basically did was, okay, we're going to finish the story here. We're going to have this event, which is the Battle of Cartano, which we've referenced several times in this thing. They basically set about destroying the world. <laughs> it was kind of what it was. <laughs> and they just completely, and they shut down servers. So they had this big, big old event. Bahamut broke out of Dalamud mood uh, after uh, the Garlean Empire tried to bring it down onto Eorzea. Uh, we that's when the uh, sixth umbral calamity happened, and that was like five years ago in the state of the game uh, of the current game. Then they brought down servers, um, and then later on. They relaunched with as a Realm Reborn and called it 2.0 because it's still Final Fantasy 14. It was not like Final Fantasy 14 2 or, or anything. It's, it's 2.0 of the game. The entire original stuff is just gone because they basically remade the entire game and we have what we have right now. Well, several expansions later. So there, there have been some updates. Um, so, but during this time, we, we get these job quests. And so as soon as I can, as soon as I, I, I need to complete the quest, I think just to get to Ishgard. I think I could be wrong. And then I'll have access to my job quests and I will immediately be, do those and get these three abilities, form shift, meditation, uh, meditation slash the forbidden chakra. So there's a story reason and elixir field, which I, I kind of like. So We'll, we'll get get those pretty much immediately, and then I'll be able to <laughs> then I'll continue into the Heavensward expansion, which is 3.0. But they're locked behind all that. So, but anyways, uh, in your general tab, there are two buttons that you should always have on your hotbar. Always, always, always. That sprint, which you will use most often, and limit break. Limit break. Basically, uh, when you're doing a, a, uh, a party duty, there's a bar that will, will show up in the upper upper left or wherever you end up putting it on your UI. Um, and when, that's, when a bar is full, one member of your party, because it's shared between your whole party, can cast Limit Break and do a big attack. So if your tank, uh, it... Or a big effect, I should say. <clears throat> a tank will basically uh, pop up a defensive... It, it's like a defensive cooldown uh, on the entire party. Honestly, 
it can be useful at places. Not very. So as your tank, usually you're not going to be using it. Melee, you do a big single target attack. Uh, ranged, uh, you get a straight line AOE. Uh, a caster, a magic wielder like a black mage, red mage, um, uh, etc., will get a targeted uh, AOE circle. And depending on on, and then healer, you will get a um, big heal as well as raise dead as raise people so you get to, i think practically anybody who's dead would then basically have raise cast on them but if they uh, haven't been raised before and they don't have the weakened state they'll raise without the weakened state so It's powerful. Uh, as you, you get into later content, those bars will go from one to two to three. So you could have uh, what's referred to as an LB1, the initial one, LB2, which is more powerful, and LB3, which is even more powerful. So, But you should always have it on your hot bar somewhere so that you can either click it or uh, uh, use your hotkey. Anyways, where was I? Oh, <laughs> just need to move a little further. It matters not how many times you ask. Without the necessary permissions, none shall pass. Pray understand, good sir. We are, we are not the we have not the leisure to lodge a formal petition. Time is of the essence. All I ask is that you summon your superiors. Uh, allow me to plead my case. Surely you can grant us that small kindness. Away with you and dock these doors no longer. I will not ask again. You know not what you do. I gather your pleas fell upon deaf ears. A loyal man with a cold heart. I know that his kind well. I hope that you will find me more of your liking. Alphano Lavier, your service, my friend. Which I believe makes me very quite unique in this the this part of the world, at least. Few indeed are your allies in Ulda, yet you will need some if you wish to endear yourselves to the wealthy and powerful. Pray join me and my associate at the quicksand, that we may explain your situation to us, and we shall see what there is aught that we can do to help. Also, feel free to use sprints as often as you'd like. Quicksand is where the Adventure Guild is. And to, to, to go back because it was ingrained in my rant and stuff. We have traveled some several thousand miles across the sea from the nation of Doma. After in hopes that talking. we might find sanctuary in these lands. Sanctuary, Lady Yugiri? I, lying within Opard. Doma was under the dominion of the Galian Empire, as I'm sure you are aware. When the War of Succession broke out in Galamald, we aspired an opportunity to free ourselves from the yoke of imperial oppression and took up arms. Only to be crushed. And so I gathered what few Domans escaped the reckoning and guided them hither to your shores. 
a war of succession? Then the Emperor... Forgive me. You said that Doma was under Imperial rule, did you not? Doma is gone. Raised to the ground as an example to the other provinces. Twelve have mercy. And your people. On a ship anchored in Vespa Bay, flying borrowed colors. Many were complicit in the rebellion, or are kin to those who were. They will not come ashore until I send word that it is safe to do so. I sought an audience with your rulers, but was summarily refused. The lords of Ulda are not wont to entertain foreign refugees without suitable encouragement. Mayhap I was foolish to expect otherwise, but our supplies run low and we have young ones in urgent need of care. I have seen the tents outside the gates, however. We are not the first to seek asylum, nor will we be the last. Be that as it may, Ulda is no friend to Garlemald. Your tale would stir the hearts of many men and women here. The Sultana and the Syndicate will not be so easily swayed, but I shall see that you are granted an opportunity to plead your case. This is within your power? Well, far be it from me to boast, but I do have the ear of certain influential individuals. I am in your debt. Lady Yugiri, Forgive me for observing, but your choice of attire seems like to evoke feelings of mistrust. Men are wont to fear the unfamiliar. We know this from experience. We seek only to spare the people of Ulda unnecessary disquiet. I shall defer to your experience then. I thank you for your understanding. It seems I have urgent business with the Flame General. I leave our guests in your capable hands. Okay, now that we're out of that. Uh, so, Richard, your comment about uh, they wanted to be loyal to Final Fantasy, you don't need to jump there. Um, I would say that's a poor excuse. Um, just because in previous Final Fantasies where you wouldn't need to, if it's not, if it wasn't an MMO. Uh, if you're trying to make an MMO for the Final Fantasy franchise you still want to make sure you have the full MMO aspects. And one of those is, is there's lots of verticality and being able to jump. So, well, being faithful to Final Fantasy is a really poor excuse for not being able to jump in an MMO. I mean, yeah, if you're not an MMO, you may never need to use that ability. Yeah, I I still think it's a bad excuse. It's there's honestly, if if some of the original MMOs, such as World of Warcraft, you could jump. When people are going to your MMO, they're expecting the ability to jump. This is not some game breaking ability. <laughs> You should still be able to jump. It, it's it's one of those just like little details, which would bug anybody. Like I would think that this game was the off oh, the worst if I wasn't able to jump. I probably wouldn't have been playing Final Fantasy fourteen as much as I have in the past several months. If I wasn't able to jump. I know this is a really stupid comment. But it is. 
I mean, I have other other uh, things like seriously, the amount of abilities uh, traits and a big deal. These are passive, uh, but the amount of of abilities you have, uh, monk, I think, is actually one of the few that are reasonable. <laughs> but there are some where it's just this like stream of of things and and rotations and abilities and it's it gets it can be overwhelming to some people uh some people really enjoy that complexity and and having to solve the fact that i have 10 fingers and my fingers can only reach so many buttons <laughs> it becomes skill of being able to like and figuring out oh what i keep getting you i really just like my number numbers, like I have WASD for my, for my movement, like and and Q and R for my back and forth, which, or Q and E for my strafing. I still prefer to have all those buttons. I know some people rebind those so that like, well, because we turn our camera and turn our positioning with our mouse, we really don't need to have the turn buttons. I suppose that's true. And rebind this turn buttons to the strafe buttons. So all you're really doing is going backwards, forwards, and and, and strafing left and right. But to me, I it, there's just something to me that I don't want to use that for. But, but that's beside the point. And then just remembering all these hotkeys. I I hit uh, I could hit uh, rebind F. I suppose I haven't bound that to anything. Just realized. But there's there's so many. Well, wow! Over the years, have generally got more and more abilities. But then, like, okay, we need to roll this back. Um, we're gonna have utility abilities that some people just won't necessarily need all the time. So it's not necessarily something they need like readily at hand. They can put it on a heart bar and just click uh, without having really much trouble, etc. Yeah, and, and that's true, but it, 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 these are just my personal complaints and observations. I mean, it works for 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 different people. But that's that's just me. Anyways, back to you, Gary. If I may, sir, as I said earlier, we have been at sea for several moons and our supplies are all but spent. I have not the heart to repeat the tales of our tribulations, nor would I, uh, nor would it please you to listen to them, I think. Uh, suffice it to say, however, our sacrifices have been made. Though it shames me to beg for more, more than have already offered so much desperately compels me. Gentle sir, if you and your associates could spare any provisions, anything at all, it would go a long way to lessen the suffering of my people. Let's talk to Mamodi. Hells, why didn't you say so sooner, Asako? Of course I help. <laughs> you couldn't have picked a better day to tell the truth. The wealthy merchant and his entourage were due to have a banquet here in the Morrow Sea, but just sent word they can't come, meaning I got a boatload of foodstuffs and no one to feed. Best of all, they paid for the lot in advance. <laughs> Go and call on Fruduth and Catherine. At the uh, Sapphire Avenue exchange, told them I said to ship the uh, little prince's orders to the Waking Sands. Oh, and if they argue, just show them these. Show them those letters. They should set them straight. Uh, I'm gonna go this way. Diablo 3, I will have to disagree with you. I don't think that Diablo 3 killed uh, killed the franchise, like especially considering of how excited people are for Diablo 4. 
Uh, Diablo 3 had problems at the beginning. Uh, and I think the, the main reason that people were having problems was because of the real money auction house that they had. And then when they released Reaper Souls, the expansion, and got rid of the auction, the, the auction house, everything was great and hunky dory. It was the the original game was was perfectly fine. There was a there was a shit ton of customization. I mean the the rune system that they have have um, has been there since the beginning. And yeah, it's not a talent tree. Like, I cannot play Diablo 2. I cannot. It is way too confusing. It, 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 the, I, I actually don't have a problem with the talent tree. I think there's other things with Diablo 2 that I couldn't play. I I still bought the uh, pre-order for um, the uh, Resurrected, the, the remaster. So I'll probably uh, try to play it some more. Um, but I, I think also there was a, I was having issues with graphics too, <laughs> which they'll fix and resurrected. Um, but I wouldn't say they necessarily killed it because a lot of people still played it and, and still had a good time. It was just, it wasn't that great. It wasn't bl blizzard quality. But in any case. But I don't think it necessarily killed it. It just wasn't a great entry. She's in the business freeding refugees now? I ain't normally one to question Mr. Smelby's judgment. That doesn't seem wise to me. I'll not speak for the children, but if you ask me, any man that can't earn a crust deserves to go hungry. What? That's a rather odd request. May I help you miss her during instructions? Now I got a letter from her. You know, you shouldn't encourage them like this. So they'll start to expect it. You mark my words. Just like Muldon merchants. Honestly, because Diablo 3 is a pay once uh, game, you, like there's no subscription. You, you just pay for the content and then you got it. And then whenever they come out with patches and stuff, you still got it. You don't have to buy, <laughs> buy anything. The on and off cycle for seasons, I think it's perfectly fine. They didn't give you any trouble, did they? Good. Now go and tell Lady Yuguri it's all in hand. I I dare not hope for such magnanimity, much less expect it. Mrs. Modi is generous indeed. I shall be sure to thank her most humbly. Lady Yugiri, I briefed the Flame General on your situation. I think you will be pleased with his reply. <clears throat> I have been granted an audience. Before the Sultana and the Syndicate both, we should return to the Royal Promenade at once. You have done much for us, Master Alphino, and swear we shall return the favor. <clears throat> not to so, Lady Yugiri, for not has been given. This small favor you fairly won with your words, and it is with words that you must win the favor of the Syndicate. Then I shall choose them with care. <clears throat> You'll be accompanying us, yes? Good. Your presence may serve to remind the Syndicate of the true meaning of philanthropy, and that nothing, nothing so unplatable will be required for them, assuming the Domans are willing to earn their keep. Come, the Flame General awaits us in the Royal Promenade.
All right, coffee's been brewing, so before we get into this next cutscene here, I'm going to quickly go up there. Um, I'm going to quickly uh, pour myself a cup of coffee, so be, be right back. Just, just like a minute. Didn't take long. Because it's directly across from us, so I can really go either way. I have coffee. I am a happy cub. The pleasure, let's go. The others are already inside. Let's not keep them waiting. to meet you at last, Your Grace. To mark this auspicious occasion, I should like to present to you the finest treasures our humble nation has to offer. Alas, the circumstances which have brought me here today have divested me of both time and dignity. I come before you as a pauper in direst need of aid to request that you grant my people asylum in the line of Ul, welcome you to our city. Be at ease, Lady Yugiri. Although I myself have heard the tale of your misfortune, I would ask that you recount it once more for the benefit of the others here present. As you wish, Your Grace. For many years, my nation, Doma, suffered under the yoke of Imperial rule and my people yearned to be free. Thus, when a war of succession broke out in Garlemald, we sought to take advantage of the chaos and reclaim our liberty. Alas, our enemy proved less preoccupied than we had hoped, and our rebellion was put down in the most brutal fashion. Those who survived, how many do they number? 
More than 200 souls huddle within the cramped confines of our own galleon's hold. Yet this figure accounts for but one of a number of ships which escaped the purge. It is my hope that you will allow us all to dwell within your walls. Should that prove unfeasible, however, I humbly ask that you accept as many of my people as your resources allow. Pray understand, we do not beg a boon, but propose instead an arrangement. We would serve as soldiers or tradesmen until our debt is repaid. What are the Syndicate's opinions on this matter? I, for one, think it's a marvelous idea. Lady Yugiri and her people strike me as an industrious lot, and there are parts of the city which have yet to be fully restored. If they are willing to work, I see no reason not to let them. The head of the Mirage Trust is not known for his generosity. He sees profit in this. I agree. That said, these are foreign refugees. To admit them would require a formal resolution. Shall we call a vote? The law is the law. Lord Lolorito? Tell me, are you blind or willfully ignorant? Even now, our streets are choked with the displaced victims of the Calamity and Alamegan refugees. They live hand-to-mouth, subsisting on aid provided by the immortal flames, the cost of which grows ever higher. The wealth of Ulda is not without limits, my friends. And need I remind you that these refugees are prone to violence and criminal activity? You have all read the reports, I think. Without homes or employment, it is only a matter of time before men grow desperate and take that which they imagine has been unjustly denied them. Yet, knowing this, you would have us swell their ranks. Mayhap you think the brass blades and the flames are not hard-pressed enough? Some say the chairman of the East Aldenard Trading Company passes Gil thrice daily. This may explain how he came to be the wealthiest man in Uldar. Or it may simply be that he's ruthless beyond reckoning. Surely the Sultanate can support the few hundred domains Lady Yugiri represents. That our resources have been taxed, I do not deny. But we are hardly in danger of financial collapse. I move that an exception be made. An exception, Your Grace? I am suddenly reminded of a similar debate some years ago regarding a number of Alamegan refugees, if memory serves. What were your words that day? <sighs> ah, yes. The law is the law. And so our visitors remained in little Alamigo. Mayhap our wise and benevolent Sultana would be so good as to enlighten us as to which other of our laws should not be upheld. Mind your tongue, Lolorito. My lord, I share your concern for the welfare of our great nation, but we must endeavor to take a longer view. You know as well as I that people can be a resource still more precious than Gil. Precious or not, they were never yet so reliable. And unlike those who frequent your establishment, I have no desire to gamble with my future. Uldar's greatest asset is, and has ever been, her material wealth. We risk this at our peril. One need only look to Telegi Adelegi's example for evidence of the danger in allowing sentiment to dictate policy. How far the vaunted Mirage have fallen, both in repute and profitability, since he began employing refugees. How I choose to conduct my affairs is not your concern, my lord. A proposal has been tabled. 
Given its urgency, I move we forego further debate and call a vote. To accept the Doman refugees or not. Those in favor, I bid you remain. Those opposed, I bid you leave. That it were within my power to welcome you and your people, Lady Yugiri. As you have observed, however, my authority in such matters is regrettably limited. Without the consent of the Syndicate, I cannot act. I understand, Your Grace. And I appreciate all that you have done on our behalf. The nerve of the man! If that bastard had not forsaken the Eastern trade route, little Alamigo would now be thriving. Oh, that you should have traveled so far under such dire circumstances, only to be refused in this manner is utterly unconscionable. Pray, accept my sincerest apologies. Now that the Empire no longer poses an immediate threat, they see little reason to maintain the pretense of unity. The Monitorists have grown especially defiant of late. Lord Lolorito most of all. But this is neither the time nor place for that discussion. Well, <clears throat> our our little our our little uh, new <clears throat> free company is now rank four. It's a happy little thing. <clears throat> I would like to discuss how to handle the Doman refugees. As you observed, Lorito is not afraid to speak his mind, nor is he like to change it. Uh, often have I wondered how a man so skilled at weighing the worth of things would be so <clears throat> capable of seeing the value in people. Bah, I will waste no more words on him. Not when the Domans have yet to need our aid. Everyone follow me to the Hall of Flames. Hall of Flames, which is right next to the Aetherite Plaza. The Syndicate has spoken, and I have no point in moving I have no point in moving that the matter be reconsidered. The monitors have made the position clear. Agreed. Ulda is not an option. Nor are Limsa, Liminso, or Gridania, I judge, given the state of their internal affairs, which leaves our Doman friends confined to ships. Gods, the thought of them huddled in an airless hold with no help of better treatment. Would that I had more time to find an alternative, a place not bound by the concerns of great nations.
Minfilia, that is precisely what I wish to discuss. I understand the Senecan's decision, I do. We all wish to preserve uh, that which is ours, especially when we believe it is under siege. And I cannot me meekly accept, but I cannot meekly accept this judgment, not while my people suffer. Would it be out of the question for the Sultanate to accept us for a limited time, a week mayhap, or even just a few days? Excellent, I shall keep you informed. Lady Yugiri, I have a proposal, if you would hear it. Out with it, Master Alfano. The headquarters of, of my order, the Science of the Seven Stones, stands in the place called Ribbon's Toll, an outpost in Wardona. Uh, like most outposts, it is frequented by mercenaries and other men of action and lacks the comforts of more well-established settlements. However, the leaders of Revenant's Hole have been doing their utmost to change that. To that end, they would need of able-bodied individuals willing to work as frontier hands. Hard labor, lest you doubt, would not, not say food and shelter to, by way of reward. Terms then unlike those which you yourself proposed, Lady Yugiri. Though I will not hear a word said against our beloved Ulda, Revenant's Toll would offer certain advantages, the absence of unhelpful bureaucracy being the most obvious. If they would accommodate us all, we would gladly accept. Master Alphano, once again I find myself in your debt. Pray do not thank me, my lady. The life your people the life your people go to is one of hard labor and few comforts, as I'm told. But before that, there remains the matter of how they may safely be borne to Revenant's Toll, which will be no small feat considering the distance and their present condition. Mayhap the Uldan Adventurers Guild may be of assistance. Uh, look for me there or not, this goes. Lady Ugiri, if you and your people would accompany me, we may discuss what aid the Immortal Flames can provide. I'm going to stand here until everybody leaves. What, what does this flame commander have? Where's the welcome face, Esco? I have a task of which one of your impeccable record would well suit, though perhaps campaign would be a much more fitting description. In the sheer commitment of this mission demands. As you are well aware, the inhabitants of Thanalan have long suffered the hostilities of the Amalja. The Lizardmen have been quiet for a time, uh, chastened by your victory over the Primal Afrit, and once again the Beastmen stir. There have been a resurgence of kidnappings a great number numbers than before. Matters are grown so far out of hand that the local garrisons have petitioned us for reinforcements. That is why I wish you to lead an extended action against the Amalja, but arrest these raids. Port Commander Gisselert, uh, Head of Security at Little Oligo, and he will brief you on the details of your duty. I believe I know what this is for. Is this like a 43? Yep. Okay, I know what it's for. We are going to ignore that quest. Because that is for the Amalta Beast Tribes. I did run past it. See, if I didn't have my, my turn keys bound, I wouldn't have been able to do just that. Anyways, moving on. Talk to Alpha. We are, we are concerned that the government refugees may find the journey to Revenant Soul too much to bear. Uh, too long has it been sequestered aboard the ship with insuffic insufficient supplies and scarce room enough to breathe, let alone stretch our limbs. With that in mind, Ms. Mamori has kindly offered to accommodate the domains uh, until such time that they are ready to set out for Madonna. If he's healthy enough to travel, will embark as soon as transportation has been secured, while those too weak to leave 
at least will be permitted to stay until they regain their strength. I love my body. Which is one of the reasons why I like having old dogs in starting city. What news? Transportation remains uh, our greatest obstacle. General, is there aught the immortal flames can do? I fear that exceeds our mandate. Where a smaller number may happen, it would go unnoticed, but the syndicate will not bear the cost of escorting more than 200 uh, domains for, to Mordona. When government fails to act, the responsibility falls to us private citizens. I will engage the services of the 77 caravans on the domain's behalf. Very well, we shall begin contract negotiations at once. Your generosity is most welcome, my lord. After all that has befallen these good people, it is the least I can do. Come what may, we shall ever have a friend in Ulda, Lady Yukiri. And you in reverence too, my lord. Well, it sounds like we all have work to do. Lady Yagiri, let's put our heads together and settle the details for our arrangement, shall we? I will entrust the task of escorting our dumb friends to you after you have rested your own road-weary legs, of course. What say you? By rested, uh, essentially means... Uh, Uh, essentially means uh, finish a quest and then start the next one. As we speak, the Dumbins suffer uh, prepared to departure at Vesper Bay, where, wherefore they are transported by carriage to Ulda. That said, this may have been have all been decided rather suddenly, and it would not surprise me if the refugees require some assistance in coordinating their preparations. As ghosts, I would have you return to Vesper Bay and facilitate the process uh, through tasks great and small. In short. Whatever must needs be done, do it. Speak with a man named Hosen. When you arrive, as Lady Yagiri uh, tells it, he has been designated the leader of the first group. And we'll just see from where this for me get the tickets. Greetings, Alpha Nova informed me that a scion would be uh, arriving to help with the preparations. I am honored to meet you, though shamed as well. Great warriors should not be tasked with such trivialities. Yeah, it's fine. I, I knew from a glance, at, a glance what manner of a man you were. I too have some skill at arms, as do many of our people. Pray forgive this trifle, but might I trouble you to help round up the children that have been take, given to my care? They have been most adept at staying hidden from my sight, but perhaps your keen eyes will succeed where I have failed. You have my thanks, friends. Uh, pray seek out my son, Yozen. He will tell you more. Hosen and Yozen. I'm going to pick up this quest. This is uh, for relic weapons. But I'm just picking it up so I can pick it up. <laughs> will probably be one of those things where I'll do like later like uh, when I'm offline because you know I got all this armor and 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 stuff uh, yeah well, I'm not streaming so oh hello there I'm Yuzin son of Hosen <laughs> will you be coming with us to Alda I hear you're traveling by a horse bird drawn carriage but don't you think that they're queer Giant birds that people ride like horses? I still want to try riding one, but I'm like, well, I got wind speed here. <laughs> What's that? You're looking for the others? Don't worry. I already told them to get ready for the carriages. I'll need your help, though. They 
We are just finishing game of hide and seek. Three players are still in hiding, and since Lady Yagiri told us to take it really seriously, they won't move until they're found. But Vesper Bay, Bay isn't that big, so I bet you can find them in no time. I believe one is over here. There it is. Hey, you're not Yozen. Who are you? I'm Koshuru. That's against Winsball, hey? I didn't know I didn't know anyone else was wait a minute. You're one of those um stallions, aren't you? <laughs> no, science. Science! And you must know Lady Geary, right? Isn't she great? She's really good at hide and seek too. Oh, right. It's almost time to go. Nice beating you, Eskos. Um, are you playing? Uh, no fair. Yuzin didn't say anything about adults. Huh? You get, a, get to ride a horsebird carriage? I don't, I don't know. It sounds scary. But if Yuzin says it's safe, I'll go. I remember where this other one is. over here somewhere. No? Let's take flight. Aha! Ah, that's the garber! Run! How'd you find me? Bah. <laughs> Simple. I flew. <laughs> I guess I need pr more practice. Maybe you're you're just good at this. I mean, the Garleans did find me. Okay. Uh, fly. Wonderful. All the children are counted. Hide and seek? Ah, I see that you're curious. It's quite simple, really. Lady Yugiri thought it best that the children know what to do in case the Guardians found us. I should hope that these days are behind us, but nonetheless, take comfort in knowing that we are prepared. Okay, I had a sudden urge to do something. And I'm going to use this. So I'm going to show you a feature, which is. Which this feature is uh, a paid service uh, and you get a couple of the free free one of these. It's uh, called a Fantasia. It's basically being able to redo your character. <laughs> it's like everything. And you can buy Fantasia on, on the Mog Station, which is their, um, which is their like uh, store stuff. It's just like the character customization for, uh, for WoW and other games, I'm sure. All right. Take that off. Okay, you now re edit your character's appearance and background. Move all gear and log out to the character creation scene. Alright. Okay. 
can hear you. Here you are. That's what I wanted to do. We're, we're going to uh, start. Right, cancel. Wait. Yeah. Oh, I see. There we go. Uh, I'm going to go with a Hrothkar, but I'm going to gonna do a brand spanking new version of this. So there we are. Uh, because he's as it goes, he's short. I want to do wouldn't it be kind of blue. I like having the tough. Ten links. As a ghost is small always. So height short, tail length short. Alright, so faces. Mustache. Yeah, I like that. Hard to see it. Thank you. 
Let me turn these all off. I like scars. Cookies. I'll do. The nice thing is, if I ever want to go back to my original Let's Ghost, my, my Lala Fell, I got another Fantasia, so. You get, like, two during the, the first expansion. I'm not sure if we get additional free ones. And I believe the help doesn't work. Oh, it does. Okay. All right. Back to work. We are... I mean, in there, sorry. Like, when I took off all my stuff, that it wasn't shown. First caravan is due to depart shortly, uh, uh, followed by the rest of uh, at regular intervals. My family and I, including my stubborn old father, uh, Home, uh, will be traveling in the lead carriage together with young Koharu, whom I believe you've already met. Though I understand the road to Ulda is uh, regularly patrolled by our brass blades, it would give us great comfort if you would agree to accompany us on our journey. Once again, I thank you for your kindness. When you're ready to leave, please inform Mark Rickman. You're going to be off, are you? Uh, well, I'm meaning to have a word with you about that. Rumor from the Blade says we might have a problem. A fierce-looking beastie has been slotted south of the bridge to hammer the wound. Might be that someone's eyes are playing tricks on him, of course, but it don't, don't pay to gamble in this business. 
Now, I know you can handle yourself in a fight, but this lot here is another story. So I'm thinking you might go on ahead and have a quick look around. Make sure the area is safe, safe like. And if you come across anything dangerous, you know what to do. When you're satisfied the way is clear, meet us outside Horizon. The plates tell me the road's there, the road there is safe, so I reckon we should make it that far on our own. Assuming the self-same bastard doesn't try to rob us, that is. Mm. Oh, too bad. Hey, you do that in a uh, place where there's an Aether Egg, but guess not. That's taken care of. So there was a beastie. Was being the operative was being the operative word. <laughs> Moment respite. Well fought, sir. Well fought. And if only I had a... If I were in better health, I would have been proud to stand at your side. And pay my son no mind. He forgets his responsibilities. Preclude, preclude acts of daring do. Mm -hmm. well, be that as it may, I cannot help but envy you. You've been able to call upon heroes of your strength and skill in Doma. Things would have been very different. But we cannot change that uh, the past. Those who uh, fought and fell are forever lost to us. Lost but not forgotten. Lady Yagiri's kinsmen, least of all. They fought fiercest, though they they knew full well it was in vain. She had every right to walk away, yet she chose to stay. Food, shelter, the promise of a better life, all this and more we, we owe to her. How does one even begin to repay such a debt? In kind, Father, to she who has given everything, we shall give our all. Whatever work there is to be done, we shall do without question. Ditch digging, brick laying, it matters not. Revenant's toll will grow and prosper by our hands. <laughs> huh? Uh, Master Essigos, uh, Koharu and I want to know why you, you became an adventurer. Uh -huh. To wither the wild blue blows. So you like roses. <laughs> I think I understand. I mean, they're nice and everything. But don't they grow a lot of places? It's my turn now. Excuse me, Mr. Asagos. I got a question. What What's Revenant's Toll like? Is it pretty? Mm. It's a bustling outpost frequented by countless adventures. I like that. Mean there's lots of people who are just as strong as you? Oh, I can't wait. Mevkoharu, it is my turn. Mr. Asagos, when it's 
When I'm older, I want to be as strong as you. What do I have to do? <laughs> My weapons and armor from Rowena. <laughs> so you got new experiences and adventures. Of course, to be a better adventurer, you need to go adventuring. All right, all right, that's enough questions from Mr. Essigos. It's not fair. Why does he doesn't get to ask two questions? I want to know about adventuring just as much as he does. Just one more, please. Do not think I, I could be an adventurer like... Do you think I could be an adventurer like you? Really? Then I will. Thanks for your advice, Mr. Eskos. I don't forget. I'm going to be an adventurer, too. I get to Revan's told. Let's... Let's make an adventurer's guild for domains. We'll protect our friends and punish the wicked, just like Mr. Esagos and Lady Aguirre. Yeah, just like Mr. Esagos and Lady Aguirre. We can talk more about it in the carriage on the way. Will you be joining us? Oh, that's such a cute face. I'm very happy with this, by the way. And the blue tinge is interesting. As much as I love the the Lullafell personal things, I I might actually keep this for a while. Not the entire time. I feel like I made good decisions. Good decisions. Where am I? Oh, speak with Alphano at the quicksand. <laughs> Teleporting into Elda was would be superficially considering I'm like just right outside the door. Oh, also that means I can. Oh, did I not? Oh, shit. I'm gonna apply this for now. That doesn't look too, too bad in my Hrothgar. Har I need to... I need to do a thing. Do I still have them in my... That's what I'm looking for. Um... Oh. I need to clean up my things here. I do. I need to pop them in there. Do I have glamour prisms? I have nine. I'll fix this in a second. Before we go any further with the uh, this quest, I'm gonna quickly retire to the inner room for reasons.
I'm going to completely change this. This plate will ever be evolving. Here, now it looks more monkish. Ah, that's gross. I, f I take it the first group has arrived? Excellent. Ah, there's... Is there aught else? No, no, I have matters well in it. And you and Lady Yagiri should travel to Revenant's Soul forthwith. It is past time Lady Yagiri uh, met with the guild representatives in Revenant's Soul. Since I do not foresee any further uh, matters rising here in Xanolin, which might require your personal attention, I would instead have you serve as an escort to Domen Delegation for the duration of the journey. Uh, speak first with Slothborn. Uh, upon your arrival, he is the one whom the Domans will be working most closely, I should think. Afterwards, introduce L Lady Geary to Minfilia and the Guild Emissary. If both meetings go well, the resulting ties should sta stand the Domans in good, st good stead for which is to come. Safe travels, us ghosts. And off to Rodin Soul. And this must be the esteemed Lady Yuri and her associates. I greet you all as friends and bid you welcome to the toll. I hope you do not mind our uh, draft of fi fighter is off-putting. Poor though we may, be, may seem, we have a wealth of spirit and camaraderie to spare. You see, race and greed don't enter into here. We welcome all sorts, uh, provided they are willing to earn their keep, of course. We are no strangers to hard work, Master Slothborn. And you may rest assured that we will carry out our orders with due diligence. Oh, not for a moment do I doubt your commitment, my lady. Pray understand I give the same speech to all new rivals, and you needn't bow your head or call me master either. We are both frontier hands as far as I'm concerned. As you wish, Slothborn. Um, may this meeting mark the beginning of a long and fruitful relationship. Our guests have yet to meet the antecedent. Seven hells, Eskos. Why are you wasting time with me? See them to the rising stones. Well, you're outside and she's inside, so I thought I'd, we'd just have you meet them first. To whom much is given, much is expected. Forgive me, I require a moment to compose my thoughts before meeting with your leader. We shall join you in the rising stones and on. One small isn't small, very small anymore. <laughs> Hmm. 
Tis no use. Tis no use. Our attempts to reach the students of Baldassian continue to meet with failure. Oriange has explored other venues of inquiry, but they too have yielded not. We will persevere, of course, yet within our hearts the truth is clear. We are awaiting confirmation of that which we already know. How fair the domains? I have given to, to understand you have kept quite busy in Vesper Bay. May I help you question the wisdom of aiding refugees when the primal threat remains unresolved? I should not blame you if you did, nor would I deny that this matter f falls outside our normal purview. But that is but, but that as it may, I could not ignore the plight of these refugees, not when they are within our power to help them. Lady Ugiri is here. Please show her in. I should very much like to meet her. We have no objections. Pray do so with our blessing. Your answer plead pleases me beyond words, my lady. And are you quite certain? We have no way of knowing how ma many might answer my summons. In the event that a remnant's toll could not accommodate us all, we would find an alternative solution. Should that come to pass, we will find it together. As ever, it has been a pleasure, Antecedent. At last, we must take our leave as the first carriages are due to arrive any moment. Should you require aught, le aught else, uh, pray speak with Slothborn. Lady Giri, as it goes. The men and I will make all the necessary preparations to ensure that our dumb and friends feel at home upon their arrival, though I must admit that I am still troubled with the matter of the missing crystals. Yestrola should be returning to returning anon with a report uh, from a field. May I hope you could wait here and speak with her upon her arrival? How goes the fishing? Caught anything slippery? Aye. Our suspicions were well founded. The Serpent Reavers are indeed the culprits. The plot thickens. Has there been any movement in Thanalan? It has been blessedly quiet. Which is to say the Amalja are being no more or less of a nuisance than usual? Summoning a freet with such crystals as they have hoarded? Uriange too reports not out of the ordinary. Then we have our explanation. Your explanation for what, pray tell? For the recent spate of crystal thefts in Thanalan, we naturally assumed that the trail would lead us back to the Amalja. Yet it did not. It led us across the sea unto Vilbrand. Vilbrand? There have been reports of increased Sahagin activity of late. Oh gods, they mean to summon Leviathan? That is the way of it, I fear. Whilst conducting our investigation on behalf of the mineral concern, we came upon evidence implicating the Serpent Reavers. With the aid of the Maelstrom, I was able to verify our suspicions. It is only a matter of time before Leviathan returns to harrow the seas. But there is more. One of the Sahagin, an elder by my judgment, spoke of attaining the gift and knowledge of eternity. Ugh. Heck a moment. Such a disturbance in the ether. If I did not know better, I should think this device defective. And there is the explanation. Soon, soon it shall begin. Our lord 
sun shall rise mid surging waves to wash away the finless one. And I shall be granted the gift and knowledge of eternity, and with the emissary stand equal. Then shall I know no cessation, no oblivion. Whence comes this promise of immortality? The emissary? We have outstayed our welcome. The gift and knowledge. Are the two of you quite well? You... you shared that vision, did you not? Even before the Sahagin made mention of the Emissary, I recognized Elidibus's words. He is behind this. But surely it is not within his power to grant the Echo. My lady, unless we act swiftly, Leviathan will rise again. The Admiral has already requested that we intervene to prevent this. Failing that, we are to attend the Primal's extermination. She will have our full cooperation. Let us make haste to Limsa Lominsa. I mean to play a part in this mission. Tataru, pray, take charge in my absence. My lady, are you sure this is wise? I am aware of the risks, but there is something I must see with mine own eyes. And, and he's not referring to the fact that she's having Tataru uh, uh, take charge in her absence. <laughs> it's, her, it's her going to Lipsa. The true nature of the Echo. Very well. I shall not stand in your way. On the condition that you permit me to accompany you as bodyguard. Your company is ever welcome, Thancred. I take it something ill is afoot. Aye, a primal is about to be loosed upon Eorzea. A primal? A godlike being whose very existence is a bane upon the land. We scions of the Seventh Dawn are sworn to put an end to their kind. I see. Know then that I am learned in the arts of war. In return for the kindness you have shown my people, I would lend you my blade. It would be most welcome. When contending with a primal, one can never have too many able allies. If you crave a more intimate understanding of the problems facing Eorzea, this experience is like to provide it. Be sure to come well prepared. Plainly, should the worst come to pass and Leviathan is summoned, our only recourse will be to face him in battle. Given past experience, we may very well think that eventuality inevitable. Yet, so long as there is any, even a chance that the Primal's return might be prevented, we must need to bend all our efforts toward achieving that goal. Before we do aught else, let us hasten to Limsa Lamenta and meet with the Admiral. She will not, she will not have been able to to intervene she will not have been idle in the intervening time i can speak and read and will doubtless have valuable information to share off to lipsa i do that i'm gonna refill my coffee be right back shouldn't take that long
All right. Yeah, wait, wait. Where are we going? Oh, going bullet trouble. This Hrothgar uh, uh, gladiator paladin uh, looks familiar. I think we're pretty much like running this all in the same. I expected pray to take this list to the commander. Merweb! I love Merweb. Welcome, friends. I take it Yishtola has appraised uh, you of the situation. Let us waste no time, then. According to our best intelligence, the Sahagan had not crystals enough to summon their god. Alas, we do not count on those serpent rivers venturing as far as Thanalan to su supplement their cash. For our short-sightedness, we face with the grim prospect of Leviathan's imminent return. Needless to say, I am not inclined to let the fishbacks have their way. Even as we speak, the Maelstrom t makes ready to launch a large-scale operation to thwart the submarine, and we would welcome the science support in this endeavor. And if, God forbids, our efforts should come to naught, I will need to trouble you more for more than mere support, much as I did when Titan last walked these lands. Lady Menphilia, I'm given to understand that you mean to accompany our soldiers to the front lines. I can only assume that you are sound reasons for doing so. I do, Admiral, but I would rather not be drawn drawn on their nature. I will say, say only there is something I would see with mine own eyes. Is that so? Well, I am not so stubborn as to deny the wish of one whose aid I require, but precautions must be settled. I shall require that you remain by my side at all times. With that settled, let us speak of the operation. Essegos, Maelstrom scouts have currently reconnoitred Sahagan movements within the Sapsa's spawning grounds. And so upon completing their mission, they will return to the operation staging point at Camp Skull Valley. I want you to make your way there forthwith, with that you will be appraised of the latest intelligence. Commander Fokbrida has has charge of the uh, garrison. Which means I go to airport. Actually, just for good measure, I'm gonna end. Make sure wind speed, who looks a little bit larger, mainly because uh, I'm on uh, Roscar now. Nope, not him. Good. Sir, so how might I be a service? Nothing. Sorry, I didn't mean to click you. Oh, Rita. I've been expecting you, Sion of the Seventh Dawn. On behalf of the men and women here, I thank you for your cooperation. Safety of our citizens is paramount. With your aid, aid will, will prevent Leviathan's return. Fulbrita is growing ever more agitated by the minute. As you may may know already, Maelstrom scouts have been dispatched to reconnoiter the Saps' spawning grounds. Though it pains me to admit that the Maelstrom has never faced a foe like the ones the likes of this before. We must proceed with all due caution. Among other things, they have orders to determine where Leviathan might emerge, uh, assuming it comes to that. And yet their return is long overdue. I fear that ill has befallen them. For better or worse, we must ascertain their fate. It is not too much to ask. I would have to aid in its submission. Five scouts ventured in Zepsa, all, all told. Here, take this flask of restorative to tend those who may have been wounded. Though it pains me me to even consider the notion if they have perished circumstances permitting i ask that you recover their bodies by no means venture too deep into enemy territory however we can ill afford to lose you at this structure
where? I'm in the right place. Okay. Oh, there he is. Help somebody of all times. I forget the assertive. Here we go. Thank you. Are you my life? I have ambushed by the Serpent Reavers. Lightly armed as we are, we didn't stand a chance. We were able to flee this far, but the others are captured. They are taken to the Serpent's Tongue, I'm certain of it. I can make my way back to camp, but I fear the worst for, for my comrades. Save them, I beg you. realized I forgot to change the thing. Sorry about that. It was like a regular podcast. See, this is the advantage of flying. <laughs> You've returned, thank the navigator. When I learned that you went to the serpent's tongue by yourself, I feared we would meet an untimely demise. But tell me, what became of the others? Where's the corpses? They're now flowers. Dear gods, these ruins are not intended to kill, but to torture and remain. Does their savagery know no bounds? Enemies are no, they go too far. I dread to think what may have become of the two that remain unaccounted for. I pray that you haven't suffered the same fate you at the very least, one of the, my men came back alive, and with that, I owe you my thanks. The price we paid was dear, but we have the intelligence we need. Even as we speak, the Admiral finalizes the details of the operation. The war horns will sound any moment now. Be ready to sally forth when they do. Thrice damned fishback bastards, I'll kill them slowly and then chase their rotten souls through all seven hells. Peace, Commander. In peace, Commander, we are here for a purpose, and vengeance is not it. I want your mind on the task at hand, savvy? I apologize, Admiral. You may count me. I count on me to keep a clear head. Good. According to our sole surviving scout, the Sahagan and their, their thralls have already begun to amass at the Aetherite in the depths of Sapsa. If we are to act, act, it must be now. The men are ready. We must await your orders. The men are ready, We but await your orders, Admiral. As predicted, the Sahagan have tightened security in and around the spawning grounds. A frontal assault is like to be met with fierce resistance. Ah, but we are not so artless as that, Commander. We shall divide our forces and, and strike them hard and fast at key locations. Remember, our ultimate objective is to take the Sapsa Aetherite and eliminate the Sahagan priests presiding over the summoning. We are not here to kill them all.
Maelstrom shall engage and distract the Sahagan Legion of Drowned Pirates at the Serpent's Tongue. Commander, you have charge over this effort. Be mindful that the lay of the land there is devilish uh, for attacking forces. Let the foreign levy uh, spearhead the assault and have, have subsequent units fan out to cover their flanks. At the se selfsame moment, a diversionary squadron formed of galleons from the Crimson Fleet shall harry the enemy from offshore. And likewise, we science shall f form smaller units in hopes of confusing the Sahagan defensive effort. Eskos and Yustola, the two of you are to make your way to the site of the summoning ritual. The Admiral's diversion should serve to thin the enemy's defenses, rendering their path less perilous. A small party, I believe, should be able to win through without drawing unwarranted attention. Thancred and Yigiri, your mission is to lure as many Sahagan as possible out of the spawning grounds. Having done so, take it to your heels and circle around to join the infiltration unit with the Estrola and Essigos. When all has been set in motion, I myself shall cut a path to the Aetheride, accompanied by Lady Menphilia, as was agreed. Well, don't, don't let me keep you, friends. To battle! When last did we fight side by side, as it goes? Too long, I won't. But come, let us away. Pray do not concern yourself, twice but a glancing blow. Come, the Aether I just close at hand. Get in.
Damn them. They have made thralls of soldiers and civilians both. Did I miss much? So that is how you fight in the Far East. Mental note, pick no quarrel with Domans. But seriously, if I am to keep up, I must needs forsake elegance for efficiency. To the etherite. You'll forgive me my lateness. been something of a liability of late, I know. Tis high time I set about making amends. <sighs> Long have you shriveled sewer walkers, tormented our kind. But no more! Your time is at an end! I know this sensation. It's the echo. What? Eternal! Oh, mighty love. 
Leviathan. Ruler of the seas, born of water's primordium. I offer unto you this frail flesh, that you might grant your faithful servants deliverance. I beseech you, come forth! Die, damn you! Where did he go? What say you? Nary a single ship? Hells take that sea demon! Gather the survivors and get to shore. Leave the wrecks for the pirates. Leviathan wastes no time. The diversionary squadron is lost. For a mercy, it would seem the primal now makes for open sea. But why does he not press his advantage? Unless... God save us. He means to unleash a tidal wave. I love it when they have voice acted scenes. It means that I don't have to actually read it. <laughs> Understand, I speak of no normal wall of water. That which Leviathan makes ready to conjure creates more destructive power than aught seen in nature. Enough to raise entire coastal set settlements. If his last attempt is any guide, we cannot suffer history to be repeated. Yet, how in the seven hells are we to prevent it? Though our plight uh, cries out for action, we must take thought. So, so long as Leviathan remains in open sea, he is effectively beyond our reach. Our fleet is second to none, and that... That... You may be sure, but uh, Limlane herself would struggle to best the Lord of the World and his element. In a straight fight, he would he would make meat and match wood of us. We need another plan, which m which much is plain. Let us return to Limsa and see if we cannot think of one. I shall await you in the command room. And I'm going to run pee, so be right back.
All right. Here we go. I mean, look at this sexy beast. Some Belstrom outfit. There used to be a hamlet beyond South Tidegate in Western Lanosha. Hearthstone, it was called. Some years prior to the Maelstrom's founding, Leviathan rose from the briny depths and set about unleashing watery hell upon us. On that occasion, the company of heroes put him down before he could do too much damage. But when the bastard came next, this time in the wake of the Calamity, we were not so fortunate. Weary of ravaging our shoreline, he summoned a tidal wave which fair leveled Hearthstone and washed the soil away for good measure. The area was subsequently occupied by the Sahagin. Aye, the thrice damned creatures transformed it into a spawning ground for their brood. Given the quantity of crystal stolen to feed him and his legion of thralls, we can be fairly sure that Leviathan is stronger now than in his previous incarnations. If that sea demon is left to wreak havoc, what befell Hearthstone may well befall a larger settlement, even Limsa. That cannot happen. The primal must be stopped. That was ever our objective, Admiral. But how are we to achieve it? The sea is Leviathan's uncontested domain. The ships of the Third Squadron could not close to within a hundred yards of the Primal, nor could their cannons pierce his defenses. I have read the reports, Master Thancred. Our warships may as well have been bloody pleasure barges for all the good they did. Seven Hells! Is there no way that we might strike back? The Company of Heroes defeated Leviathan, having first lured him into an inlet. But we must needs contend with him upon the open sea. It will avail us little to consult past experience. Admiral, if I may. Speak freely, Marshal. By all accounts, Leviathan's most formidable weapon is the very sea itself. Waves and whirlpools, tides and currents, all these things are his to command. The key to victory, I believe, lies in disarming our foe. This, in effect, is what the company of heroes achieve with their ruse. We cannot lure Leviathan from the sea a second time. But what if we could weaken his hold upon the element of water? I have heard of devices capable of such wonders. They draw upon the power of corrupted crystals, I am told. If mounted upon a ship, such a device might be used to prevent Leviathan from bringing the full force of the sea to bear against us, rendering him no more dangerous than any other sea serpent. I, uh, in my... Head cannon, my main Elagos, uh, uh, has has wooed and married uh, uh, this guy. He is daddy. He, he is he, he is my 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 original warrior of lights uh, uh, mm -hmm. husband. I have determined it. That will ever shall be. Anyways. Of course! Sid built a similar device to grant the Enterprise safe passage through Garuda's Tempest, did he not? No, it's all headcanon. <laughs> so it's not real in the game. I can't I can't marry him. 
Okay. This isn't Mass Effect where you where you, where you can, can uh, uh, ship. It's just head cannon. This is their relationship. <laughs> I'll go it's maybe part of the story. So, anyways, this is how I, how I do it. Anyways, <laughs> where were we? Begging your pardon, my lady, but to give credit where it's due. This is something I heard from an old arcanist friend of mine. It makes little difference who thought of it first, so long as it works. Beg the specifications of this device from your friend, and I shall pass them on to our people at Naldic and Vermelis. But before we proceed any further, I would voice one concern. Piercing Garuda's defenses is one thing. Suppressing Leviathan's attacks, quite another. In matters of science, I am as a babbling babe. But I cannot well imagine that such a feat would be possible without a veritable mountain of corrupted crystals. The question being, do we have a ship big enough to bear such a burden? Mayhap not, Admiral. But too might. Recall you the tale of Mistbeard's greatest haul? It is said that he lashed two ships together, side by side, the better to bear his plunder. By your leave, we might attempt to repeat the trick. The gods know it would be quicker than building a new vessel. Knowing future things, I know where he got that idea. Mistbeard did this. Truly, Marshal. Upon the subject of the Pirate King, you are as a scholar. Total for foreshadowing. That's all I gotta say. Now, from what <laughs> I have gleaned of these matters, the device will need to be in close and constant proximity to the target. To wit, we must lash our twin vessel to Leviathan. This in itself will be no small feat. Ramming speed will be required, but given the weight of the cargo, that will only be attainable with the aid of a towing vessel. Suffice it to say, the task of piloting said vessel will entail considerable danger, and I would not ask it of another. I volunteer myself. will be dangerous for all involved, but we have no better recourse. Very well. Commodore, assemble the remnants of the fleet at Moraby Bay. Give priority to our soundest vessels. The repairs can wait. Storm Marshal Slafirson. Command of the operation is yours. I want that twin vessel ready to sail post haste. At once, Admiral. And then there is the small matter of slaying the beast. The fate of Limsa Lominsa rests upon your shoulders once again. Go well, warrior of light. So that scene right there where uh, Slafferson and, and, and I were, were looking at each other. When I initially saw that, I was like, oh, did he just flirt with me? Because he flirts with every warrior flight, apparently. Anyways, talk to you, Gary. Beings held as gods also exist in what we call the Far East. Legends tell us that they've walked among us in days of yore, and I confess that I never truly believe them. That I should l live to behold one is humbling and horrifying in equal measure. Now that I've come face to face with the Primal, I do begin to understand why the Garleans fear them. Now. What is it? A message, Admiral. I judged it best that it be delivered at once. 
I am listening. According to the Yellow Jackets, a man who appear appeared who claims to have defeated Leviathan. One of the company's heroes. The details are yet hazy, Admiral. He has dispatched one of our own to question the individual. Hmm. I am disinclined to put any straw in his claim. And even should I be tr true, it is as you stole the said. None save the company of heroes have bested Leviathan, and we know how they went about it. If this man is with their number, what could he tell that we would not know already? And yet, having wagered Limps' survival on two ships, some rope, and a pile of crystals, can we afford to ignore this man? If his testimony could wield us any manner of advantage, should we not hear it? Damn it all! The twin vessel uh, should soon be ready. I have no time to wait for the Maelstrom's report on this, this proposed Primal Slayer's claim. Let's go see him out and learn what he knows. At the very least, may spare you the torment of waiting for the reckoning in idleness. The man you were talking about is believed to be a resident of the be a resident of the Grey Fleet in Lower Lenosha. The Storm Private said to question him should already be in the vicinity. May your journey prove fruitful. I have a feeling I know who this is. It's been a while since I actually did this quest, so I don't remember specifically what it is. But if I think it is, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's him. It's the same guy we talked to about Titan. Trust me, it's faster this way. Just slap him. Oh, uh, look here. You you have your bloody story, right? After you carry these sacks of grain over to the mill. But, but sir, that's what you said before we had me pick up things, <laughs> pick those oranges, and before I mucked out the chocobo stables, and before I rolled the millstone over to the mill, and also before. By the way, his outfit. Seriously. Godsman, you've worked three days straight without a week of sleep. Three days! <laughs> and do you hear me complaining? But I suppose some of us just just ate made for the rougher stuff. All right, all right, I'll give you what you want. Never <laughs> let it be said that whole tractum isn't a generous soul. Now pick up your ears, because I won't be repeating myself. Too about to see. Besides, there's only so much epicness a man can take in one city. Keen. Well, the tale of tractum's epic encounter with the dread pirate Levib <laughs> Levibetus. <laughs> Let me be this huge, make no mistake, to give you an idea of how big e each of the scales is about as wide across as many members long. <laughs> and that's no mean feat, let me tell you. I thought I would barely uh, see for all the brine he's been pelting me with. It'd be a lagoon worth of at least. <laughs> he's even knocked me trusty axe on my hands at one stage. Of course, that, that proved to be a great mistake. <laughs> what happened next? Why well, I grabbed him by the tail and tied him in knots and not wanting to take all the glory for myself and let me mates in the company of heroes handle the rest. 
like I said, a modest smells heroic. We'd be too modest now. <laughs> I don't know. Look at your outfit. <laughs> Is that modest? <laughs> now there's some to say he never truly uh, beat <laughs> Livabetus. You got to learn to live with him and make the best of a bad situation, not the company of heroes, though. Ah! It's it's you! I'm sorry, I didn't mean it, it was just to join the attention is all. I take it back everything I said! I'm not part of the company of heroes, I'm no marauder, I'm actually a complete coward, I'm nothing, I'm Chocobo Nun Noah! Oh, the baggage is wriggling in the chocobo down. I have to lie, lie to women to tumble them, and that don't happen much. <laughs> Me members tiny is pathetic. Oh, wow. Sure as hell, I didn't fight Libidus, but, but I have seen him with my own eyes. It was a few years back when I was working as a baker's head. I was uh, shirking Medidas one day, <laughs> loitering about the harbor when I saw it. A great big massive sea serpent come mums off the shore with a fleet of galleons making straight for it canyon fire. It was so bloody scared I sold myself right there and then. What? Oh god, it's just remembering that day made me sew myself all over again. Hey, wait. If you're shaking... Uh, <laughs> you're asking to be this. I mean, you're planning to fight him, ain't you? Well, take care. He really is terrible. Dreadful, I tell you. If you're not careful, he'll end up in his gullet at the bottom of the sea. Why, you worthless lying horse, son! I can't believe you made me handle chocobo dung! As he goes, this has been Philia. Were you able to learn aught of use against Leviathan? I beg your pardon? Livabetus, I see. That is unfortunate. At any rate, <laughs> tidings for you. The twin vessel is now complete. We await you at the Moby Drive docks. Pray make your way here as soon as you are able. At, at least it was fast. <laughs> I told your daunt to the grave fleet proved uh, proof fruit, fruitless. My sympathies, lad. I'll wager it served to, to take your mind off the events of recent days, though. But enough of that, that nonsense. The moment of truth is upon us. The twin vessel, the world eater, I call her, is, is complete and she surpasses all of my expectations. In addition to her prestigious uh, ton, tons age, uh, she has been uh, fitted with a platform that you and yours might... Uh, maneuver freely in battle. I would m mention also that she is nigh unsinkable, but I'm not one to tempt fate. The world leader and her crew stand ready, my friend. Just give the word and you'll be. We shall bear you to Leviathan. And so she's ready to send you off to counter the Lord of the World. Ah, I know that look. You are ready. Having been. Constructed in some haste, the world leader may not be pretty, but I assure you she's capable. She has been fitted with what our friends at uh, Naldek and Vimeli are calling an elemental converter. Uh, assuming the thing works, it will use the power of the crust crystals on board to rob Leviathan of his hold over water. Depending on how the battle unfolds, you may well need to activate the device manually. Keep it in mind. It is expected that the Sahak and their, their thralls will attempt to come to Leviathan's defense. Accordingly, the Maelstrom will once again employ diversions. Thancred and Yushola, I would have you assist in this effort. If it is to fulfill its purpose, your diversionary force must not want f for numbers. By your leave, I too shall go would volunteer my blade. You would be, we would welcome it, having... Uh, seeing you fight in Sapsa, I dare say the fishbacks will find your presence highly diverting. Thancred and Yustola, if you would 
Join the third levy and Lady Ugiri the fifth. But what words will I have for the man who would has made a sport of slaying gods? Only these. Go warily, for the sea is an unforgiving place to wage war. May the navigator guide you through the storm, all your light. I would echo the Admiral's sentiments and add a few of my own. Know that we all have the utmost faith in you, Eskos. May the crystal bless and keep you. Blessings of the na navigator and Heidelin herself. The world eater, hard. Trials. This is kind of a fun one. Uh, five minutes. What should I do during these five minutes? Um. Oh, let's do this. So let's unlock a beast tribe. Commander Swift said he has assigned someone to assist with our growing Beastman problem. Glad to see the urgency of our situation being taken seriously. Now that I'm sure the commander explained that Malzra activity in the region has grown almost frenzied, uh, it seems like the Blizzard men are determined to carry off every peddler and traveler that tries to pass through Southern Xanolin. And I'm not uh, speaking of fur. of fur. fur. furtive. I'm not speaking of furtive. Night, nighttime raids. Oh those go together here the bastards are striking in full daylight even against uh, escorted merchant caravans we have heard reports of raids as far south as the Sigoli de desert so it's not a simple matter of increasing patrols on the roads into little alamigo we must mount a decisive response and soon the next time the Amalto appear, I would have you ready to send them howling back into the desert. Not long before you arrived, in fact, the scouts reported a merchant uh, resting in plain view on one of the tra trade routes. Uh, make haste to the location of marking your map and see that the, f the fool is it taken by a raiding party. Oops. It's not what I wanted to do. Go this way. Overconfident fools, you think your raids here go unnoticed? What treachery is this? You, you are the bro Brotherhood of Ash. We are, though we number but few, we shall be your death this day. Treacherous heathens, your victory will come at a price.
Attacking when the enemy's back is turned, your ancestors would turn in their graves. A soldier's life is one in a peril. The first rule of war is to out is to understand the mind of your enemy as well as your own. Your presence is noted adventurer, but this is our battle. We need not become involved. I am Hamujka, and I lead the Brotherhood of Ash. We are what remains now of the all-consuming flames, that the all-consuming flames have reduced the rest of my people to unthinking zealots. You interest me, child of Eorzea. Be it fortune, fortune or fate, I would not ignore the forces that sought to bring us together. Here, I extend you an invitation to join us at the Ring of Ash. Welcome to the Ring of Ash Adventure. This place serves as home of our humble gathering of soldiers. My brothers and I ever seek to hone our martial prowess and honor the blood of our ancestors. We keep the old ways of the desert nomad and the warrior. To those who are worthy, we show the proper respect regardless of origin. All right, it carries the reek of brimstone. Could you be the one the champion said to have laid low the Lord of the Inferno? Then I would have you understand the curse that has befallen our fanatic brethren. They have forgotten the code that governs our people, the glory that comes from a warrior's death. They speared away the weak and the feeble and offered them up in exchange for the barbed blessings of a hoary god. Day after day I witness the shameful acts of my kin, the honor of the Amalja as a faded, paltry thing, no longer driven by the righteous fortunes of battle. It is these kidnappings that most stoke the, the flames of my fury. Why the victims often bear no arms at all, that triumphs can be found in such cowardly attacks. We are hunters, my brothers and I, and the fallen Ambalja who huddle in the Zonark's uh, own prey. They have shared, shared by outrage, and then I bid you join us in our kinfolk. No, I will not accept this pretender. You claim to be one of the heroes that fell to Freet. I'll cut down a dozen men who boasted that feat. More likely, you slew a guttering fire sprite and convinced yourself it was the king of the seventh hell. I did not ask for your counsel, Lulagal. Well, I and I alone make this decision for the Brotherhood. <laughs> then you better not stray into the path of my arrows, adventurer. You have too many enemies for me to waste ammunition on puffed-up heroes like you. Forgive this interruption. I shall vouch for the authenticity of your claim. Only you, one who has faced and defeated a freak, could have the scent that you do. Uh, speaking of uh, primals...
Yes, Daddy. We will beat the Leviathan for you. Always in the same place. I'm gonna come over here. The tanks don't know what's going on. Okay, I think I think we're good. Or not. This might be a problem. How many times has actually done this fight?
I've actually done this more uh, on a healer than I've done it on DPS. I go tail mainly because I got positionals. Because it's, it's a debate for, from the guys that I've seen for this is that all physical damage is reflected from the head and magic damage is reflected in the tail. Like all. And the tanks are just not affected because, well, they have the tank. Kind of not fair if the tank could attack the tail. Okay. But then I've had people who's like, well, melee is exempt from that. It's just in regards to uh, uh, brain damage. Well, my excuse right now is just because of my positionals because I can get flank and back by go attacking the tail. That's where everybody can attack. Uh, might have been too early? Nope, nope, we're good, we're good, we're fine. I got to LB! My, my key bindings I forgot, so it got weird, but it's fine. I'm gonna give that warrior tank a, uh, a accommodation for taking, ta tanking the tail for me. Oh, I was taking it that first time, so... Back to Limsa in the command room.
Which is this way. I always get disoriented when I come up. Oh, I didn't want to do that. That's my... Knowing the urgency of your business, I thought it best to refrain from making conversation during the past few visits. But today, I will permit myself a few words. <clears throat> I feel truly privileged to have the honor of admitting you <laughs> a hero such as you. You are an inspiration to us all, sir. And on that note, yeah, I'm away to you in the command room. Wink. Now I feel like he flirted with me. <laughs> I'm just taking everything as flirting. Hi, Daddy. Anyways, where were we? We Lominsons are sworn to strive, till sea swallows all. And swallow all it would have, had Leviathan prevailed. That we still strive now, we owe in no small part to you. Not for the first time, you have delivered Limsa Lominsa from the wrath of a primal. Never has our nation known a stouter ally. On behalf of my people, I give you my humblest thanks. I am actually very satisfied with my Hrothgar here. It is that I give here. thanks to old Mistbeard, too, for his fine solution. Whatever else he may have been, tis clear he was a resourceful soul. Would that I had a man like him in my service. Before I set foot in these lands, I had no inkling that the people of Eorzea contended with such mighty foes. Suffice it to say, their existence came as something of a shock, as did the idea that they could be defeated. This experience has served to remind me of the vastness of the world, and the boundless potential of man. Though I am but a refugee in this realm, I would fain be of use to you in your fight. Know that I am tutored in one of the foremost combat arts of the Far East. It may seem outlandish to the Eorzean eye, but should any of your people care to learn, I would be pleased to initiate them. And I will see to it that they are grateful. I have no doubt that your knowledge and skills will serve us well. Besides, your art is not so outlandish as you think. Would you not agree, Master Thancred? Not escapes your searching eye, Admiral. Few are privy to this information, but Limsa Lominsa is home to a certain secret fraternity. Its members are trained in a form of combat not unlike your own. By my judgment, it should not be beyond such individuals to adapt to the techniques I witnessed you employing with such admirable deftness. I am heartened to hear this. I, too, noted a kinship between your style and mine own. Though it seemed to me that you fought differently in the beginning. Uh, I... I suppose I did. What can I say? I'm a man of many talents. <laughs> Though you may labor to believe it, Thancred was once something of a scoundrel who fraternized with the criminal class in these parts. You stole her! You jest! But for a chance encounter with Alfino's grandsire, he might never have left Limsa Lominsa, or received an education in Charlian, or taken up his post in Uldar, which is where he trained in the Blade, lest you wonder. Minfilia, please! <laughs> it would seem there is more to you than meets the eye, Master Thancred. Lady Yugiri, I am told that you and yours came to Eorzea seeking permanent resettlement, and that many domains have since been engaged as frontier hands at Revenant's Toll. Mordona is many things, but a place of refuge it is not. Know that I would like nothing better than to furnish your people with a new home here on Lominson soil. Alas, wracked by instability as we are, our nation is in no fit state to take you in. 
Yet I'll not have it said that we turned a blind eye to your suffering. Until such time as we can do more, I pledge to send provisions. We are in your debt, Admiral. I realize that it scarce qualifies as repayment. But if it please you, I shall set about sharing my martial knowledge with your people at once. You wished a word in private. The better not to spoil the festive mood. History repeats itself, Admiral. As the Kobolds did before them, the Sahagin resorted to summoning their god over a territorial feud. They acted in self-preservation. It may be that the Sahagin initiated this particular clash, but how it begins does not interest me so much as how it ends. I have not forgotten our conversation, Yashtola. I am aware that man bears part of the blame for the Primal's existence. Nor am I ignorant of the Sahagin's reason for acting. They sought to secure a place to breed and multiply that their kind might survive. Self-preservation, as you say. But we have as much right to live and thrive as they. If our own survival is threatened, are we to lay down our arms and welcome oblivion? Nay. And so you kill, that you might live. Yet if living is a right, then that right belongs to all peoples, be they men or beastmen. I'll not deny your reasoning. But when a storm gathers, it falls to me to see my people safely through it. That is my duty, and I shall do it. As must we all, Admiral. Stay the course, then. But know that it will lead to no good end. Basically, what I think Yashtola is trying to incite into the Admiral is... Think about diplomacy. <laughs> Instead of Man fighting with the blade. First and foremost. Instead of fighting... Maybe, you know, try to be diplomatic. To justify mm. his actions, he clads himself in the armor of righteousness, though it be a fancy of his own making. In this, mayhap the Galians and we Domans are not so different. Eorzea has become as a raging sea. If we are to keep our heads above the waves, we cannot scruple to drown the man next to us. When hopes of coexistence founder, strength must determine who has the greater right to live. The Admiral has informed me of your arrangement. I have in my keeping made a letter of introduction for Lady Yagiri. To this house stands a gate leading to a pier of uh, smaller fishing vessels. Look for an inconspicuous shore man there and present the letter to him. He serves as a gatekeeper of sorts. Now, before you go, I am obligated to remind you that the members of this um, um, fraternity, of which you would be introduced, abide in the shadows of the Minton Society. They value their independence more highly than pirates and are united by a stronger bond than Mithril. To wit, they are invariably wary of new faces. Though it is penned by the Admiral himself, mere words on parchment will get you only so far with their into their confidence. You must work on every ounce of their trash they place in you. And here is the letter. Go to the aforementioned place and show it to the aforementioned men, and good luck. Oh, good luck. So... 
all of this is to help you Guri meet with the um, the Rogues Guild. Uh, where is he? I think it's down by the Fisherman's Guild, right? Uh, I think it would be better to take this path. Or easier to take this path, I should say. Here we are. Hmm, got business with me, Venture? So you're the man the Admiral sent word of. I was hoping I might uh, catch a glimpse of Thancred, too. It's been a while since I saw his shite-eating grin. But what would they do eyed wenches about? I suspect she's got her sands full. Ah, you must be the Far Israel, which Merwib uh, says wants to train and train with us. Welcome to Lamenta, my lady. I am Yagiri of Doma. It is an honor to make your acquaintance. I must confess, when first I learned of your organization, I had certain preceptions as to the nature of your membership. It would seem I was mistaken. You are not the first person to say that, lass. Uh, Limps is a city of pirates, to be sure, and pirates don't give two thoughts about keeping a spotless reputation. They're hardly, indeed, a secret society to do their dirty work. Might be that as many people that I keep to the shadows, but we've got nothing to be ashamed of. It is sim simply better for business when we remain unseen. And so you have developed fighting techniques suited to this purpose, I see. Know that the practitioners of my art, too, are denizens of the shadow. It is a stealth that our strength lies. There's much we must learn from one another, I think. Then what's in the seven hells are we waiting for? If you come with us, uh, Yugiri of Dome, what's it? You, <laughs> you can get acquainted with more private surrounds. <clears throat> hey, huh, that didn't come out right, did it? Master Esagos, I shall remain with these people for a time, that I might study their ways. Though I am loath to be separated from my countrymen, I take solace in the knowledge that they are in the best of hands. You have been a true friend to the Stomans. No words would suffice to express my gratitude. Ere long, I hope to begin imparting my martial knowledge to the people of Eorzea. When that time comes, it would be my honor to welcome you as a student. All right, uh, I'm going to grab this quest and then I'm going to do a slight detour. We only got about 50 minutes left. Gary has, has the air of a bursting with gratitude. Much and more has occur occurred since I f the first I beheld Orsia from the Galleon's deck. Suffice it to say, I did not envision being invited to play a part in your noble struggle. But forgive me. I have kept you over long. Doubtless you are pressing business of your own. Rest assured that I no longer require an escort in this land. When next we meet, Lady When next you meet Lady Menphilia, pray relay to her my humblest thanks. Would that I could do do so in person, but I must needs fulfill my promise to the Admiral. Till we meet again, more you have liked. Alright, before we head off to the Rising Stones, we are going to Take a look at a different quest. So, this is the reason. You're not behind these covenant doors of a worldly type like you, Guff. Uh, where the dutiful sisters of Edelweiss, all pure and saintly like. Now, bugger off. Hang about. Uh, ain't you that cove, cove as goes by the name of Eskos? Well, I knew it. Something about milling primals leaves its mark on a cove, it does. As, anyway, you 
being who you are, you might have an inkling as to what goes on here. The Admiral sent you to meet with one of my associates after that business with Leviathan, if you recall. I think this text changed from, like, if I had done this, like, earlier. Because, um, I wouldn't have had Leviathan at that time. That right, mate. You stand at the entrance of the Rogue's Guild. Of course, uh, it would be a poor sort of underground organization if we put a bleeding sign up in the front door. Anyway, from what Lady Yugiri told me, you're pretty handy in this crap. She's all seen to some private business right now, but I reckon you might have some use for a bang-up cove like you. If you're interested in joining us, tip your you tip us your daddies and, I'll, and we'll put it hilt in each one. Uh, just like the gods intended. So what do you say? Fancy learning a new trade? Good to see you again, but I'll probably warn you there are a few points there before you dive in. We have most guilds take pride in turning their members into the best bloody candlestick makers they can, they can be. We only care about getting the job done. Ain't the jobs... And the jobs ain't, ain't pretty. You become one of us and you'll soon be neck deep in scum and knife fights. So if you're looking for a scrapper across rooftops and pink dandies and the blood or they're blunt, you best take up with a different crew. Think of that and come back if you're still keen. Yep. Let's get you off then. Benny. They told me you were in Medicine Cove and so it's approved. You'll need every ounce of that metal soon enough. Now step inside and have a prattle with Jack. He's an upright man, the master of the guild. I am the one they called Jack, though I su I'm surprised you heard of me. Perhaps you get enough to tell me your name, along with the kindly cove has told you mine. Ah, the famous Essegos. Oh, Lonnie left, left Patch let you in, did he? Hmm. You can't throw a blade for shape, but that's a, that's one. <laughs> but that one I don't miss not when it comes to sizing up a a better cult to the Stalin. Mm, just one thing. You ain't a pirate, are you? Well then, it's time that you s you were stalled to the rogue. Uh, pull in your be best beater cases, and I'll s swear to you if myself when you're ready. Now, I could f fill your w waddles with the storied history of our guild, but that's just the win and wins. The most important thing, the only thing you care about, is getting the job done. Now, most folks, and I'm assuming you're among them, know that not long after the Lemonson's founding, the city was overrun by a motley collection of pirates and thieves. But as wild as they were a lot, it soon became clear that they had all ended up killing each other as they didn't lay, lay down a few rules. An unspoken code of contact, as a word. One, you don't bite the pur purses of your fellow Lemonson's. Two, you don't, uh, you don't wreck a crew out of their spoils. And three, you don't trade culls like they they were trattle. I'll admit the finer points of the code are mites murky, but m most agree on those three at least. Now you might be thinking none of that amounts to a sack of uh, dillberries. Now the admirals outlawed piracy, but in the back alleys and black markets where Merub's grip ain't so tight, the code's still alive and well. And just as the law is enforced by the Yellow Jackets, the code is regulated by us rogues. We too, we go where the shadows are darkest and hand out justice to them as break the code. Some rum-soaked cove uh, steals goods from the wrong cull and we, we steal them back. That's the job, my natty lad. Of course, we don't hop the twig when blade work's called for neither. You'll see there's more to our dagger play than just sticking calls in the pointy end. We'll, we'll weaken a mark with poison, fade away and strike it in the darkmans. Whatever it takes to get the work done. Well, Essegos, what do you say? Got the guts to do a rogue's job? Got the guts to do a rogue's job. Alright, then first off, 
Not if we need to get your kit sorted out. Rogue needs to be light on his dew beaters to stay on the, the Mark's trails. The job might have, have you fighting across a deck or weaving through a mob. And the last thing you want is a bleeding great great battle axe that hooks itself on every, every rope and post. That's why we stick to daggers. They let you slip through the streets just as easily as you slip through a rook's, rook's rib. Here, take these stabbers and let's see how they look on you. Just don't go so, get so excited with your new toys that you forget to dress for the role. You'll be uh, surprised at how many colts come back to me in their bloody small clothes. I need to sell off a few things. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. Put those. No, 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 cancel. I need to create a new gear set. Here we are, rogue. Put that in my bars. Man, strap those gators on without cutting yourself? Well, you're off to a good start, I'd say. Next, we want to get a, weight, a feel of the weight and speed of the new weapons. I reckon these bleeding cleats in the field outside limits those should serve as your first lesson. I right, test your blades on a few of them lambs and slice up the rats and, and pugils for good measure. Mind that you're, you're milled in beasties one at a time, though, lad. I know you've served, served far worse in the past, but you're no dimmer dabber for, for them stabbers yet, just yet. Uh, there's a few more things I'm going to do, but I'm not going to continue this one. Uh, because we got other things. But basically, what the Admiral was referring to was the rogue skill. So, here we go. We're, we're, we're getting back to this. So now we are going to just continue with our regular stuff. Heading off to Rosen's Toll. Speaking to Mentilia. Slot detour. Also, because I uh, changed race, I need to or get the appropriate gear for the race, which I'll do another time. reflecting upon the events which took place during our visit to Vilbrand. If you have a moment, I would share my conclusions with you. Please, bear with me. When the Sahagin Elder summoned Leviathan, he employed the power we have come to know as the Echo, though I cannot well explain the how of it. It would seem he became immortal in so doing. When the Admiral subsequently slew him, his spirit emerged from his lifeless flesh, a consciousness shorn of physical form. Thus transfigured, he took up residence in the body of his minion with the ease of a man donning a favorite glove. Long have I known that the Echo allows one to pass through the walls of a man's soul, but never did I imagine that it could free us from our own flesh, nor less that our souls could then occupy the next corporeal vessel to take our fancy. It was of this that Elidibus spoke, an existence which knows neither cessation nor oblivion. And yet, though the Sahagin had mastered his gift and thereby become immortal, he was by no means invulnerable. As we both bore witness, he was ultimately absorbed into Leviathan. And the import of this observation? If the Asian's mode of existence is indeed the same, it can be inferred that they too are not invulnerable, that they can be destroyed. 
There exists a legend which tells of souls who are reborn upon the cusp of each umbral calamity, that they might stay the encroaching darkness. To most, it is but a fairy tale. Yet recent events have given me cause to wonder. Could the legend in fact refer to the Echo? Much and more yet remains unknown. But I am confident that all will become clear in time. For the present, however, what matters is that the key to defeating the Asians may at last be within sight. With Orianger's aid, it is my hope that I shall fathom this matter ere long. Speak of the devil. Oh, I was just about to send for you, my friend. Is Otomis? Grave tidings from the Charlian motherland, my lady. It doth concern our distant allies, the students of Baldessian. What of them? My lady, the Isle of Val, which for many years hath been the Order's home, is no more. No more? Whatever do you mean? I relate only that which hath been conveyed unto me by our agents. An etheric wave of the highest magnitude was recorded in the region. Soon thereafter, twas observed that the isle had ceased to be. Tis postulated that a magic was evoked, like in power to Ultima. Twelve preserve. Thank you. If there are no other matters, I move that today's meeting be adjourned. It is done, my lord. I... <clears throat> forgive my impertinence, my lord, but these orders... I am uncertain as to what end they serve. Revolution. I think that was what patch four point or uh, two point two or something like that. Now it's the time to move on to the next section. Our friends, the very isle itself, everyone and everything. No, no, it avails us not to speculate. Orange would send word if there was any developments. Until such time as he does, we must remain firmly focused on which is within our power to change. With that in mind, I would speak of a different matter, one closer to home. Yeah, I just changed him from uh, uh, Lala, which I had to say to me was the perfect Lala fell. It looked really good. But hey, I had two Fantasias, so I used one to change to Harathgar. It concerns etheric fluctuations that were previously attributed to good King Mogamog the Twelfth. That the king is no more than a blessing of which we have have you to thank. Yeah, my main is a, actually a row. Yet yeah, all of this is not well in the uh, Twelve's Wind. Our uh, latest readings reveal an ongoing etheric disturbance of considerable magnitude. They may even suggest the presence of a primal. Needless to say, the mere possibility warrants immediate investigation, and what have you... Asidia, I do not mean to interrupt, but we have a problem. What matter of problem? A band of refugees hailing from Uldar this time has come to Revenant's Toll seeking asylum. It would seem they expect to afford them the same treatment we gave the Domans. At present, they are in the seventh heaven awaiting a formal response. I see. Mayhap this was to be expected. I shall meet with them at once. 
And Celia, you know full well we haven't the resources to accommodate many more people, considering what will happen if we do this. Word will spread and more will follow. Your opinion is duly noted, but I will hear their suit. I suppose I'd be grateful for your presence at this meeting. I apologize for keeping you waiting. My name is Benfilia, and I lead the set inside the seventh dawn. Twelve be praised, it is you. We're ready and willing to work, same as the domains. Just give us a task and we'll see it done. Pray calm yourself. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I know not of your situation. Beg your pardon, antecedent. I ain't so good with words. We've been living off the scraps of Uldal for years now, trying to piece together a life to replace the one that got took. They say there's work, but there's not but for an honest man. Not as they uh, wouldn't sully their souls sooner than their palms, any road. The flames do what they can for us, of course, but they ain't not near enough. It's only getting worse. When the calamity brought us to our knees, these rich bastards in the cities didn't help, help us up. They climbed on our backs. I didn't pretend to be clever, but even I could see what's coming. I knew we had to run. The only question was where, and then it came to me. Well, it's told. I mean, you took the foreigners in, didn't you? So you surely do the same for us. I fear the situation is rather more complicated. While it is true we did accept the Doman's petition for aid, that decision was a product of extraordinary circumstances. I sympathize deeply with your plight and pray understand that it is not possible for the organization of our means to aid all who have been affected by the calamity. And so is great regret that I must deny your request. But, but we've nowhere else to go. You're turning on the backs on us? If I might have a word. Tataru, as often is. Ill tidings from Odame, lady. Alfano has, Alfano has been wounded. What? How? Is it serious? I cannot say for certain, but I fear it might be. According to the flames, the refugees started a riot. They went wild, apparently, lashing out at any, at any and everyone. That can't be right. Why would they? They must have been provoked. The Dem demonstration is meant to be peaceful. Seven hells. Now the blades have an excuse. They'll round us up and kill anyone who tries to resist. And to see them, please, if you don't help us build a new life, at least help us keep the ones we've got. My lady, we are not the ones to stand idly by and watch innocent suffers. However, until we know more of the circumstances surrounding the riot, I am not certain what aid, if any, we can provide. If the authorities determine that the refugees attacked without provocation, then those responsible will have to answer for their actions. How can you be so blind? Find Alphado quickly. If he is in danger or worse, I would have you and none other than by, my, by your side. Thank you. And pray do not concern yourself with the matter we were discussing earlier. Ida and Papa Lima will see to it. Alphado being, is being treated at the hourglass. Hurry, Essegos. Off to old uh.
Come, you must have gathered by now that Tataru is given to exaggeration. As you can see, I am quite well. Ulda, on the other hand, is not. This riot was anything but an isolated incident. There is a restlessness in the air. Tensions long simmering are at last threatening to boil over. Ulda is a nation infamous for the great disparity between the wealthy and the poor. The majority of the populace accepts this state of affairs because they believe that every man bears responsibility for his own lot in life. To an Uldan, money is the foremost, and some would say the only measure of a man's worth. Small wonder that the wealthiest wield the greatest influence. So where do the refugees fit into this social hierarchy? What place is there for those who fled Alamigo and the destruction of the Calamity? Plainly, there is none. They have no wealth, no power, and no worth. To the Uldan way of thinking, they may as well not exist. Choosing to ignore their existence, however, is patently not an option. General Rauban and the Sultana understand this which is why they ordered the Immortal Flames to provide the refugees aid and succor. Yet, none would dispute that the expenses incurred by this policy grow by the day, with no end in sight. This has prompted more and more Uldans to question their obligation to aid these worthless wanderers. while more and more refugees have come to resent their treatment at the hands of the sneering citizenry. The manner of Lord Lolorito's refusal to grant the Dolmen's asylum bespoke a disdain for all refugees, an attitude shared by the rest of the monetarists. And you may be sure they make no effort to conceal their opinions. It was only a matter of time before the refugees united in protest. Nor is it any surprise that some among them would ultimately resort to violence. <sighs> that the immortal flames should choose this of all occasions to engage in joint training exercises with the other grand companies. By the time they return, the situation may well have deteriorated beyond mending. As I am told before, it is all but inevitable that the incident of this kind would eventually occur during the rising tensions of the Sultanate. Nevertheless, I have reason to believe that this particular riot may not have begun spontaneously. Having piqued your curiosity, good. Then you will accompany me to the Hall of the Flames. I will hear what General Araubon has to say about the matter. Now is not the time, Miss Ghost. My hands are full dealing with the refugees. Precisely the matter we wish to discuss, General. I also know. Back on your feet already. You may credit my swift recovery to your uh, Chirurgians. I can never pronounce that correctly. My memories of the riot are still somewhat muddled. I trust you managed to regain control of the situation. 
Not entirely. We secured the city soon enough, but not before the unrest has spread to surrounding territories. Pockets of resistance remain uh, throughout Thanalin. We have sent what forces we could spare to root out the last of the belligerents, but progress is slow. We are damnably elusive. I can well imagine, given the majority of the refugees live outside the walls, it stands to reason that they would know the lay of the land. What I do not understand is how they came to be so well prepared. Before my little incident, I observed that several of the refugees were armed, and not with the butcher's knives or pitchforks, but with martial weaponry. I need hardly add such equipment is costly. None can deny the tensions between the Eldan citizenry and the refugee population has increased since the demons have turned away. But would you motivate a starving man to purchase arms in lieu of food? I think not. And what of those who have not even a single guild to spend? Who could not survive without the aid provided by the immortal flames? Surely they would sooner sell the weapon than bring it to bear against their benefactors. Come to the point. Very well. My point, General, is that this powder keg's discontent was not just slight by chance. These vents were deliberately set in motion. And, and now order must be restored. This is my first duty. Until it is done, any investigation can wait. I do not have time to discuss this. My scouts have been re will be returning to Nam. General is no fool. He keeps his own counsel, and with good cause. Where he declaimed without the necessary proof that these riots were instigated by outside forces, the monstrous would accuse him of attempting to shirk responsibility. After all, he and the Sultana have been the most outspoken proponents of refugee aid. Regardless, we, have, we will face harsh criticism in the days ahead. Our allies may stumble upon the truth in time, but I have far more faith in our, your abilities, I suppose. Therefore, I propose we conduct our own investigation, independent of the authorities. To the end, I would have you make inquiries in the settlements suspected of harboring belligerents. And Commander Swift will know which they are. He may balk at a request for such information, but I am no doubt that you can persuade him with your silver tongue. I mean well, shall seek answers in my own way, after which we can regroup and share our findings. Well then, shall we? You look as though you have something to say, Eskos, do you? Well, what you ask for is no simple uh, favor. Such information to fall in the wrong hands and the lives of countless soldiers would be at risk. Even so, there is wisdom in your words. An able individual should be better suited to this task than a regiment. Very well, the brass raids have reported suspicious activity in the vicinity of Lost Hope. It may be unrelated to recent events, but we doubt it. I suggest you begin by speaking to the blades posted there. Let's hope, which is here. I'm checking my retainers. Oh, later, whale. What brings you here, adventurer, search for refugees? Well, then you've come to the right place. Ah, you mean those refugees? Oh, no, you won't find them here. Most of the people of Lost Hope have come to accept their situation and are content to pass their days in peace and quiet. Outsiders are, have trouble understanding that, like that merchant you passed through recently, Gregorius fellow, but awfully opinionated. I can't say I was sad to see him go. They expect them to send you as a ghost. Uh, I take it this means someone has read my report. The refugees who left with the merchants has yet yet to return, and I'm increasingly concerned that so Zazawaka's suspicions are correct. You aren't the foggiest what I'm talking about, do you? Never mind. Speak with Zazawaka. She will explain everything. Oh, don't hurt me. I'm not one of them. 
I beg your pardon, you're not a flame, I see. If Latoric did bid you speak with me, then I take it that you agreed to help. Told be praised for that, because you... We haven't a moment to waste. Everyone knows the flames are on the march. The others have fallen under that fanatic spell, but not I. Promises of revolution and retribution, of holding the ruling class to account and taking what is what is owed? Ha! Childish fantasy. I did everything I could to dissuade the others from leaving, but few would heed my words. Now that one of our idealists have returned, however, the madness of the merchant's plan is plain for all to see. Look behind yonder tent and you will understand why. Even now that he babbles incoherently, so traumatized is he by the bloodshed that he, win he witnessed. Try as I might, I'm a I can make little sense of his words beyond the fact that he is not alone in surviving. Yet I have no doubt that the merchant will lead the remainder of their, to their doom. I beg of you, find them before he does. What, what are you doing? Don't, don't draw! Don't draw! Don't draw! Don't, don't, don't draw! Why don't you run away with... Why didn't they run away with me? We could have escaped together. Then we'd be here with me. They be here to soothe me. Why, why do you have to stay and leave me alone? Soothe. Who are you? What do you want? I. It's true. I followed the merchant, and, and may the gods strike me down for my folly. What they will not give, you must take. He said. Then he. When we asked how, he revealed the cache of weapons he had brought and implored us to seize control of your fate. I thought about running then and there, but the others were so excited. He split us into gr two groups, set us off on our own. But when the flames found us, we didn't know what to do. Our leader tried to parley with them, but then they started arguing, then fighting, and then everyone was fighting, and the flames were shouting to give no quarter. And, oh god, the other group, they're still out there. If they don't stop them, they'll be massacred like mine was. The other refugees are hiding in the cave south of Lost Hope, and to approach them would be fruitless. They would sooner call us agents of the Sultanate and try to kill us than listen to reason. Why the twins might even deign to be do the deed themselves. A pox on all bloodied sellswords. They're, they're supposed to train us to fight, but the ones he sent us vanished during the struggle. Oh, if only we had ever listened to them never listened to the merchant's ridiculous games. He said our cause was righteous, and the gods would never suffer us to be defeated, though they were forced to confront reality that that's it. Challenge the twins to combat and show our brethren that, that their strongest warriors are no match for one man. Mayhap then they will agree to lay down their arms and renounce this plot. It's in here. Seven hells, you found us. Everyone, grab your gear and make for the rendezvous point. So, what's your game, is it? Haha, <laughs> sorry to disappoint you, lad, but you're more than willing to kill it for ourselves. Can't beat him like it was nothing. It's all almighty. What are we gonna do now?
You've returned. Did you find my brother in? What are the twins? What happened? I see. Well, you have no choice. Better than a handful of them take a beating than, than you, from you than the lot get butchered by the flames. Tell me, what did the merchant have to say when it was over? Huh? But where else would he be? Unless, unless he went to Stone Store to recruit others. Terrified refugee, which, uh, there we go. The merchant wished to approach the refugees in Stone Store, but was waiting until the flames withdrew their forces from the vicinity. Now that they have, there's nothing to stop them from continuing his work. How many, many more must perish in pursuit of this feudal cause? How much more suffering must we endure before it ends? Find him, convince him to cease his mad quest, and sh surely lead us to ruin. Technically, I could, like, fly to Ulda to get there faster, but I'm just, or, um, teleport to Ulda to get there faster, but I'm going to be outside anyways, so I might as well just fly. Have, have you seen my parents? They told me to stay here with the others. They said they would stay back. It's been days. They left with the man from Moldad. The man said they were going to change everything. Make it so we could live inside the walls with everyone else. I liked it when he said that. I didn't like it when he talked about making the rich people pay. Everyone looked so angry and I got scared. Say, mister, are you looking for someone? You mean the man who left with my parents? But I don't know where he... Wait, look, over there. I think that's him. I don't know which of these gullible fools shall be my next victim. You! I! I! Run! He's getting away! Go get him, mister! I got magic armor! Again. Why are you pursuing me? Sedition, treason, revolution, that, that's preposterous. Who has filled your head with these lies? Refugees, the same self same refugees who see, uh, terrorize the seed of Ulda, huh? You have no evidence to prove your accusations. None. No, no, I will not accompany you to the Hall of Flames. You have no right to detain me. F f for s the sake of argument, let's say did do the things you claim. Surely you don't think I give a Karen's eyes about, about politics. It was business. Only business. We both know I'm not the one you want. Whoever, whoever, however, if you agree to protect me, I swear I shall tell you everything.
What is all this commotion? Seven hells. All right, Richardo. See you next time. Probably tomorrow. Tell the others to spread out and search the area. The killer may still be close. Hold adventure. I would know more about your relationship with the victim, as well as the events leading to his death. This man is responsible for the recent riots? Mayhap we owe you this murder a de debt of gratitude. In any case, I'm obvious that you're not the one whom we seek. You may carry on your investigation, Sion. He's also in my crotch. <laughs> That's kind of unfortunate. Alright. Back to the Halt Flames. Try to find a good uh, stopping point. We're getting to the uh, end of streaming time. Wait, news us, ghost. Where's the merchant? Murdered? Damn it all to this other tell. He was not simply murdered, Esco. He was silenced. Too ma many knew his face. He was ready to divulge his secrets. Do not disappear, though. We will be be closer to identifying the true or orchestrator of these riots than you realize. Uh, because of timing, um, actually, I'm going to decline. Um, and I'm also in a um, city. I'm going to pause here for tomorrow. In we will continue the fur further adventures of Essigos, who is no longer as small as before. Uh, having been fantasia from a, a Lala to a Hrothgar. Although, I'm very happy with this Hrothgar look. Anyways. So that'll be it for today. See you tomorrow. Hit you! Oh, jeez. Sneeze. <laughs>